sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. And then the reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Lil' Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. More cases of COVID-19 and more deaths are now being reported in Georgia. The Department of Health has said today that the state jumped to 485 cases and 14 deaths as of 7 o'clock tonight. Some counties nearly doubled their numbers today. Local government agencies are taking a variety of actions to try and slow the spread. athens Clark County is taking one of the most extreme measures, enacting a 24-7 shelter in place order for residents. Today, more than 350 cruise ship passengers who were stranded off the coast of France were brought to Dobbins Air Force Base for quarantine and the president revealing more action is needed to help struggling Americans, including the option to delay federal student loan payments for two months with no penalties. As we cover this pandemic, we are sharing facts, not fear, to help you stay informed. Joe Hankey talked with an expert on the topic today who says if you haven't changed your lifestyle already, you need to know to protect your family and everybody else. Exponential growth is what you see. You have a few cases a few days ago, and now you have a lot of cases. That is Dr. Carlos Del Rio, executive assistant dean at the Emory School of Medicine at Grady. He is also an expert on the topic of pandemics. One case infects two to three people. Then two to three people infect four to six people, four to six, you know, and on and on and on and on. And Dr. Del Rio says as we wait for a vaccine, he cannot stress enough the need for social distancing. That is staying six feet away from everyone else. Right now, this is entirely too close, or better yet, just staying home. He says not doing so is putting everyone else in harm's way, especially hospitals full of doctors and nurses. It's, it's uh, irresponsible, it's, it's dangerous, and quite frankly upsets me because, you know, my colleagues are exposing themselves and are putting themselves at risk. Now to see the spread of COVID-19 in Georgia, for the next minute or so, I want you to pretend that one popcorn kernel equals one confirmed case. These are the only cases the Georgia Department of Public Health reported in the state back on March 2nd. Two cases in Fulton County, and this would be one week ago, 42 cases statewide. Yesterday, 287 total cases, and now today, 420 cases. And Dr. Del Rio says because of limited testing so far, there are other cases, many other cases out there that simply just have not been found yet. And if we ignore social distancing moving forward, this could be our reality in just a matter of weeks. I want my personal opinion. There's numbers over the next uh, two weeks, 2,500 to, to 3,000 cases in two weeks. So to stop the exponential growth, Dr. Del Rio says if you haven't already changed your lifestyle, you already haven't started practicing social distancing, you need to to protect your health, your family's health, and everyone else. I see my wife, I don't see anybody else. I mean, at work, I'm very careful staying six feet away from people, and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm 
basically by myself. I'm, I, it's very, it's isolating, it's hard. And when the Georgia Department of Public Health updated their numbers today, they said COVID-19 is now in 50 of Georgia's 159 counties. But Dr. Del Rio says there's so many unidentified cases already out there. It's best just to assume it's already in your county and play it safe. Well, people who attended a church service in Bartow County are closely monitoring their symptoms. After several members tested positive for the COVID-19 and the church, Reported on Facebook, one member had died. Bartow County now has 40 confirmed cases of the virus. Caitlin Ross spoke to the sister of a woman who is still on life support tonight. Like a weight lifted? It was just a huge weight lifted. Amanda Eber was so encouraged this morning to hear from doctors that her sister, April Abernathy, is improving. Responsive. She's been nodding her head. Um in response to the nurse's questions. April is still in ICU in isolation after she was diagnosed with COVID-19 last week. Her husband, Kyle, also got the virus and was hospitalized, now recovering at home. He sang in the choir at the church at Liberty Square for a special service two weeks ago, where several other people got sick. According to the Floyd County Medical Examiner, 65-year-old Elizabeth Wells died from complications of COVID-19. The church posted on Facebook she had attended that same service. Clay Bentley also sang in the choir and was just released from the hospital early this week, recovering from coronavirus. Amanda says she's hopeful April will come home soon. But I can't wait well, to see I her. I cannot wait to see her. All right, we are going to get back to our coverage of the coronavirus outbreak in a moment. But first, we want to go to our chief meteorologist, Chris Holcomb, who's tracking showers for us tonight. Chris. Yeah, it's closing in on the city right now. You can see the progression that this is making as tonight at five and six. We were tracking these showers as they were just moving into northwest Georgia. The individual cells are moving up to the north and east, but the entire area of rain is pushing over to the east. And you can see how close this is getting. Here's Atlanta at the bottom of your screen. This is into parts of Paulding County, also Floyd County near Rome, Bartow County, Cherokee County, just north of Lake Lanier here in northern Forsyth County, Dawson County, also into northern Hall County is where we have some of these pockets of moderate to heavy rain. It's a broken line, nothing really too strong with it. Out in West Georgia, you can see that extends out into parts of Harrelson County and Carroll County. More of this back into Alabama, Cleburne County getting in on some of that rain. And it's going to continue that motion through the nighttime hours. So far, we have not seen anything severe back in Alabama, and the trend has has been that these are weakening a little bit. We've had just a few lightning strikes here and there, uh, right there on the Georgia Alabama line and also a little bit more back into the western parts of Alabama. Let me take you live out there right now where you see that rain that is up in Rome at this hour. Uh, well, here's the forecast track. I'll show you that tower cam from Rome in just a little while. This is the forecast track showing how these showers will continue moving our way. This is at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, scattered showers around. This is going to be with us through the uh, late night hours and overnight tapering off somewhat though overnight and by tomorrow morning starting off with a, maybe a lingering shower really early in the morning and then everything is going to fade out once we go through the rest of the day with drier air coming in and improving weather conditions but those improvements are not going to stick with us through the second half of the weekend. We'll talk about the return of the rain. More on that in just a bit. Athens Clark County has become the first county in Georgia to order a shelter in place order and officials are calling on residents to stay at home to help curb coronavirus cases. But what exactly does that mean? Liza Lucas breaks it down and shares the reaction of those affected by the new rules. This new ordinance is 11 pages long. It reinforces that the strain the coronavirus is having on local health care systems. Now, UGA student Brooke Von Seeger tells me the order to stay home also comes with a lot of uncertainty. When this whole thing started, it was not that big of a deal, like you guys will be okay, um, but now it's been such a big deal. So now that they took like such a drastic measure to keep us inside 24 seven, it kind of hits like, wow, this is really like getting bad and I really need to take this seriously. Brooke says she feels like Athens is ready to do what it takes, while Athens Clark County Mayor Kelly Gertz tells me that there is a need to make tough decisions in the short term to protect the public. We care about the health of our people. I need to make sure that Every one of my residents here in Athens-Clarke County is somebody who I can continue to have a conversation with in 12 and 18 months 
when we've come out of this. The shelter in place order requires people to stay at home with a few exceptions. That includes necessary errands like going to the grocery store or pharmacy, medical treatment, and outdoor activity, which is also allowed with conditions. Now, first responders are exempt from the new rules, and there are allowances for public works employees and other infrastructure jobs. Essential businesses that are exempt from the shelter in place order include hospitals and healthcare facilities, grocery stores, convenience stores, gas stations, hardware stores, and restaurants, but only for delivery or for carryout. Mayor Gertz tells me businesses who don't follow new rules could face citations, while police will mainly enforce the ordinance through public education. The mayor said the order is in place until April 7th. Governor Kemp said yesterday that as of now, he does not plan on issuing a statewide lockdown. A longtime restaurant is doing what it can to help its workers during the coronavirus outbreak. La Grata has been around forever and ever. We all have had birthdays and celebrations at that restaurant over the generations. It is a landmark in Atlanta. And now customers are coming through in a big way to try to help them out. Latasha Gibbons explains. Normally, when you pass through Atlanta during lunchtime, you'll find restaurants full of customers at every turn. But now in many plazas, every other restaurant is closed. But before owners are faced with a tough decision of whether to throw in the towel or not, they want to make sure their customers and employees are taken care of, starting with one of the oldest restaurants in Atlanta. La Grotta has been a Buckhead staple serving classic Italian cuisine for over 40 years. It was arguably one of the first fine dining establishments here in Atlanta and uh, continues to serve patrons. It's the kind of restaurant where customers have their favorite house seat. The decor is as decadent as the dessert menu and the average employee has worked there at least 15 years. But like other Metro Atlanta restaurants, the coronavirus is threatening its very survival. We have to shutter our doors to uh, the open public uh, because of the virus. But managing partner Christian Favalli and his wife decided to turn to their loyal customers for support. They came up with a gift card campaign, hoping to raise about $10,000 to help their staff meet their basic needs. To his surprise, the financial love poured in, with customers donating $50,000. We had uh, service staff members in tears. I'd, at $50,000, we actually had to cap it um, because there's only so much that we could shoulder. Favalli says 100% of the $50,000 will go to their 30 employees for the next two payroll checks. We feel blessed that a we've been that this community has kept us in business for this long, but at a time of need, they really stepped up and, and helped out, uh, helped out our staff, helped out us. The Favalli family has two relatives in Italy right now who are recovering from the coronavirus. So in addition to being concerned about those loved ones, they're trying to keep several businesses afloat wouldn't be Atlanta without La Grotta. All the best to those guys. Meanwhile, Georgia's Department of Labor says it's being inundated with unemployment claims. To give you an idea, they say that they are seeing as many claims in one day as they did over one week in 2019. They also are seeing five times the number of claims that they did from last week. And right now, all their career centers are closed for safety reasons. But they say their resources still are available online. And that's also where you can go to file an unemployment claim. We have everything you need to know about filing an unemployment claim on the 11 Alive News app, including requirements for workers, employers, and information on where to find work. We're bringing you updates on the coronavirus outbreak all three hours of prime time on air and on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We have more 11 Alive News in prime time right after the break. Breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home. 
from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot, full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Big announcement now impacting millions from the president today regarding student loans. President Trump said students will now have the option to delay payment on their federal loans for up to 60 days without accruing interest or any other penalties. And that's good news for Georgians who on an average have $28,000 per person. We spoke to a financial expert today about this new option and any potential long-term impacts. Well, no, look, I encourage uh, borrowers, small business owner, anyone who can uh, effectively uh, stop uh, making payments with that, that have interest rates attached to it, if you can defer it in a sense, so you're, you're not getting a uh, pass forever. But right now, uh, it's an opportunity and a time where you have to look at your cash flow, whether you're a small business owner or an individual. This is just one part of the government's overall response to the pandemic. Cheryl Preheim now has a look at how people across the country are grading the federal government. An 11 Alive exclusive Survey USA poll found about half of people approve of how the president is handling this, with about 40 percent disapproving. People are about evenly split in the president's ability to lead us through this. 50% of people think the president is more concerned with getting reelected than their safety. But overall, more than half feel the federal response is appropriate. About 63% feel like the state's response is appropriate. And while 20% think schools overreacted by closing for weeks, 69% feel like the schools were spot on in that decision. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, and we're tracking that rain that is coming in from the west, and it's getting closer and closer to Atlanta, and it's uh, really about to move in to uh, closer to the perimeter here. Take a look as we move in just a little bit tighter, and you can see what we're watching with some of these showers in Paulding County, northern northwestern parts of Cobb County, southern Bartow County, northern Bartow County as well, Cherokee County, and on over into parts of Dawson County, White County as well, northern Hall County seeing some of that in Lumpkin County, where it's mainly light rain, but there are some pockets of moderate rain with that too. We haven't seen any lightning in a while. We had some lightning earlier when this was over in the Floyd County area coming out of Alabama. As you go over into West George, you can see a couple of those showers here. Carroll County just south of I-20 and then north of I-20 into Harrelson County. And then additional rain that is back into Alabama, Cleburne County getting in on some of that. That'll be approaching from Talladega uh, over into Randolph County as well. So here's the motion of this, and you can see there's more of it back into Alabama. But the good news is none of this has been severe so far. Uh, we're just going to see general showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder and flashes of lightning uh, that'll be moving through during the overnight hours, but we don't expect any strong storms with this. Take a live look out there right now. This is our tower cam in Rome, and I promised I would show you this a little bit earlier, and this kind of gives you an idea based on comparing what I just showed you on radar with some of the showers that are moving through. The roads are wet, <coughs> excuse me, not particularly heavy or anything, just some wet roads and uh, rain that's moving through and it's going to be off and on through the evening hours before it tapers off in Rome earlier than it tapers off here. Scratch in the throat. That's been because of the pollen that we've been dealing with lately. And, you know, yesterday was pollen count was only around 100. Today it's 1668. This is the highest pollen count that we've had so far this year, and it comes from pine, oak, birch, sweet gum, and hackberry trees. Grasses are low, weeds are low, but the weeds that are producing pollen are sheep sorrel, and then the mold is also high. I think that's what's getting me. 
I usually get that when the mold levels are a little bit higher. So just know that that's what you're dealing with out there. If you're having a hard time breathing, I know everybody's extra sensitive, uh, keeping up with the symptoms that we've been dealing with, but be sure to check out our website for the differences, 11live.com, the differences between allergy symptoms and the symptoms of the coronavirus. 76 right now, we hit 83 for high temperature this afternoon. We don't see any additional 80s around Peachtree City. You're close. You're at 79. And then up in North Georgia, where we've been seeing some of that rain move in, it is a little cooler. 64 in Rome, also 64 in the Dalton area. Here in town, we're going to see these showers that will be moving through. And again, the potential for some thunder and lightning, but we don't think we'll have anything too strong. You see our temperatures falling from the 70s at 10 into the 60s after that, and then holding in the 60s through the early morning hours. And we'll watch those rain chances as they begin to taper off in the early morning hours. In fact, we'll wake up in the morning to a couple of lingering showers really early, and then they move out and the clouds will gradually decrease during the day, right at about 73 for a high. So on our scale from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going with an eight, the first part of the day, We'll have a few clouds around, but then it starts looking better later in the day. Here's the progression of this rain coming into our area tonight. You can see it moving into the Atlanta area and it does weaken as it moves to the east and kind of starts to break up a little bit. But by three in the morning, still scattered showers around mainly light stuff. And then this is at seven. If you get up early on a Saturday morning, you see some of those scattered you know, light lingering showers around. That's the last little bit that'll move out. And then we'll see at noontime a mixture of sun and clouds and maybe a little more sun excuse me, into the afternoon hours. 73 for a high Saturday. It cools to 64 on Sunday with a 50% chance for showers. 60% chance on Monday back to 69. Lower 70s Tuesday and then Wednesday a 30% chance for showers in 72. And Thursday looks like the best day. Partly cloudy skies, a high of 81. Holding in the lower 80s Friday with the rain chances coming back to 30%. Accusations of insider trading going on in Capitol Hill in the U.S. Senate. Four U.S. Senators under fire, including Georgia's Senator Kelly Leffler. We speak to Chuck Todd, the czar of Meet the Press, coming up next. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. They're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different Georgians. Senator Kelly Leffler is among a group of U.S. senators who reportedly sold off a combined 
millions of dollars in stock prior to the market crash from the virus pandemic. Some of Senator Leffler and her husband's stock was sold on January 24th, the same day the Senate Health Committee received a briefing on coronavirus. Senator Leffler responded to the reports today saying she and her husband do not make their own investment decisions because of their roles in the New York Stock Exchange, and she was not informed of the sales until mid-February. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, at the very least, and I've read her defense today and what she had to say, at the very least, 18 days after you take the oath, you find yourself mired in this, wow. and that's her watch. I mean, the, the optics on this, right. pretty bad. It's a bad look in a bad, in a, in a bad period of time, right, at a bad point, especially when um, there has been this debate of, of when did the federal, you know, how soon did the federal government know and, and, and all of that. So in some ways, both Senator Luffler and the senator from North Carolina that also has been drawn up in some questionable stock trades as well, Richard Burr there in, in North Carolina, I think you have, you have sort of pent up, you know, anger out there. And that's what makes this, I think, politically so lethal for both of them and why I think they both try to be aggressive in trying to answer the criticism and deal with this. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think she's got her own primary opponent that she's got to worry about and that uh, with, with, uh, with Doug Collins. So uh, I've, been, I've been intrigued by how, how much she has been public about trying to defend herself here. I think that is an acknowledgement of how politically lethal it could be against her. Is that survivable in your estimation? I ask me again in six weeks. Yeah. I, I don't. I think this is such a this is such a monumental event we're going through as a nation. It's such a monumental event we're going through culturally, economically, uh, on health, and politically. Um, I certainly think that there will be retribution against any politician, left or right, that didn't seem to be on top of this. Right. This is one of those things that, that is sticky to people. They don't like it. It is this feeling like, oh, you're out of touch. You're the elite. That's what makes it, especially for someone who's self-funding a race, you know, you want to be a man or a woman of the people. When you're wealthy, you, you better not get caught looking like you were getting a, a, a sweetheart deal because you're wealthy, right? Insider access or insider this or insider that. So it is certainly a lethal political attack, potentially. It's why I think she, in a day that you would normally, I think, duck and cover, um, she chose to, to, try to, to try to at least um, put her, get her side of the story out. Let's talk briefly about coronavirus here at the federal level. It would seem that the U.S. government continues to fly blind in this sense. We don't know how many people have the virus. Mm -hmm. We really don't know the genesis of it entirely. There are so many questions with this. Uh, yeah. of, of, of which the government now is, is you know, on their heels collectively, tr trying to figure out what the proper response is straight across the board. Jeff, it starts with the agency that's headquartered in your city right now. I mean, this, the, the, you know, the CDC, I mean, there's a reason you don't see any representatives from the CDC in the national response anymore. I think there is sort of a, a trust problem that is built there. I mean, if you're looking for where this went wrong at the beginning, it, it's with testing. And that's why we're flying blind. And it's, and it's why the federal response is on its heels. It's why we're in this uncertain, where should we shut down, where shouldn't we shut down? It's because the initial process on testing didn't work. It broke down. Why it broke down, I don't think we have the full story yet. And I think we're gonna con that is going to continue to come out as this story unfolds. But that is why we're not sure where do we need to surge medical supplies? Where do we need to put the USS Comfort? Does it need to be in LA or New York or Seattle, right? I mean, where are we gonna need the extra beds first? Not knowing where this virus was early on put us in this situation that we're now in this sort of nationalized uh, lockdown that we're, that we're kind of sort of in. And I say kind of sort of because it really does depend on the state that you live. Yeah, absolutely. Chuck, thanks, we appreciate it. Have a good weekend. You got it, bud. Thank you, Jeff. How long can COVID-19 live on surfaces? Our Verify team breaks down the results of a new study that will help answer those questions. Because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us.
Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. <laughs> News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. We are bringing you updates on the coronavirus every night on the 11 Alive News primetime and on Atlanta's only 7 p.m. newscast. The number of confirmed cases statewide is now at 485. With updates coming from the Department of Public Health every day at noon and at 7. Tonight, local government agencies are taking a strong approach to stifle the pandemic. athens Clark County announced that they are enacting a 24-7 shelter in place for residents. Also new today, the State Department of Public Health will now be updating numbers twice a day at noon, again at 7 p.m. That includes even uh, over the weekend as well. New tonight, more than 350 cruise ship passengers have been flown into Atlanta today after being stranded off the coast of France. The Costa Luminosa ship was finally allowed to dock in France yesterday. The governor's office confirms that three passengers tested positive. They are not showing any symptoms. Another 13 are ill but have not been tested as of yet. Seventy of the passengers are Canadians. They are being taken to Dobbins Air Reserve Base for quarantine. City of Cartersville working to contain the spread of COVID-19 since last week. Cartersville and the medical center say uh, that it has had at least 32 patients test positive for the virus. As of last night, 12 were still in the hospital. 39 patients were awaiting test results. And this is why we keep emphasizing social distancing is so important. Several of those cases believed to be tied back to a church service a couple of weeks ago. Right now, no visitors allowed in most parts of the hospital. And doctors say this is the best way to ensure staff and other patients remain virus free. Another cluster of cases in southwest Georgia is leading a metro Atlanta county to take action. The Cherokee County Marshal's Office is urging people to limit who attend funerals. Here's Nick Sturdivant to explain. For most funeral services, it's a time for people to gather and console each other. However, Cherokee County officials want people in funeral homes to be safe in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak. 
The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office has recently, the Marshal's Office, reached out to funeral homes and providers recommending they follow the CDC's recommendation, asking that funeral homes not have more than 10 people at a time in a room for visitations and services. They told me this is in response to what happened in Doherty County, where evidence suggests two funerals may be tied to eight cases and expose several other people to the virus. Listen, this isn't a law. We're not going to arrest people because they've got 12 people at their funeral. We're just asking people to, this is a, this is a different time. And we're under a different set of circumstances than normal. So it's really been a harder transition for families not being able to have all of their friends and loved ones. And the sheriff's office was very clear. This is not a ban on funeral services. They just want to limit the number of people that attend these services. Telling people to limit who attends funerals, weddings, and other major moments in life will make many people feel uneasy, but experts say it helps flatten the curve of the outbreak through social distancing. This red line is what the number of coronavirus cases would look like if we didn't cancel anything and we went about our daily lives. The number of cases would skyrocket, potentially overwhelming our hospitals. Since the virus spreads through person-to-person -person contact, experts believe if we distance ourselves from others and stay away from crowds, we could spread new cases out over a longer period of time, basically buying time for doctors and nurses to treat people who need help. Right now, hospitals across the country have an urgent message. They need more supplies to fight the coronavirus. NBC's Alice Barr shows us how the government is producing more medical masks, gowns, ventilators, ventilators, and sending them where they are needed most. A crisis within a crisis as hospitals brace for a growing wave of coronavirus patients. An urgent shortage of medical supplies is rapidly compounding the threat. We literally will not have the things we need to save people's lives. The mayor of New York City, now the U.S. epicenter of the virus, calling on the federal government to order more supplies made and bring in the military to deliver them. President Trump saying today he is invoking the Federal Defense Production Act, specifically to speed production of those much-needed supplies. To use the powers of the federal government to help the states get things that they need. New York's governor promising financial incentives to private companies that start making medical gloves, gowns, masks, and most importantly, ventilators. The ventilators are to this war what missiles were to wo World War II. Right now, the U.S. has just 46,000 ICU beds across the whole country, but at least 200,000 people could need ICU care, according to Johns Hopkins University. And it's not just hospitals. Firefighters now raising the alarm. They don't have enough protective gear to safely respond to calls. We are the first link in the public health care chain. And when we lose the ability to protect that initial first link, we're in a dangerous situation. A call to arms to protect the protectors on the front lines of the war against coronavirus. We're watching these rain showers that are moving through the area right now. They're getting closer and closer to Atlanta. I want to show you this one right here that is in uh, moving out of Paulding County and into West Cobb. I just got a report from one of my storm trackers, Guy Dockstater, uh, out near the Paulding County area that this had some wind in association with it that actually blew over a couple of planters because of the wind in association with that. It is not classified as a severe storm or anything right now, but just be aware west of Smyrna over in parts of western Cobb County that that cell, even though it looks kind of innocent here on radar, is um, maybe might have some winds with it. And also up to the north, we have some scattered showers here on the north end of Lake Lanier, moderate, a couple of pockets of heavy rain. We also see this little bit of heavy rain that is coming out of uh, parts of Floyd County through Bartow County, also into uh, the northern parts of Cherokee County as well. That's going to keep moving to the east. Additional showers south of I-20 and parts of Carroll County, too. And then more rain back into Alabama. So far, nothing has been severe. Just a little thunder and lightning over in Alabama. Most of that's been dying out before it makes it here to Atlanta. And then also uh, some pockets of moderate to heavy rain at times. Let's take a look at the bigger picture. And you can see what we're watching as we go through the rest of the nighttime hours. This is another live look in Floyd County. As you see the wet roads from some of the rain that has been falling there in northwest Georgia. Mild air up ahead of this, but where we're seeing the rain. It's cooling off a little bit with temperatures in the 60s in Canton, Rome, and also in Dalton. Stay with us. We'll talk about when this rain is going to end and if we'll salvage some sunshine into your weekend.
A stern message today out of the state of Illinois. The governor has now issued a stay-at-home order for all non-essential workers, and it comes 24 hours after New York Governor Andrew Cuomo issued a similar order. The state of California also under a stay-at-home order as of yesterday. Governor Kemp told us the state doesn't have plans to issue shelter-in-place orders at this point. The U.S. and Mexico have agreed to temporarily close the border for all non-essential travel. According to the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the restrictions will go into effect overnight. It will not apply to essential workers and also should not impact trade. The White House issued a level four travel advisory. All Americans who are currently overseas are urged to return to the states as soon as possible. As Americans struggle to get a handle on the coronavirus, another country dealing with a heavy blow of the strain is Italy. More than 4,000 people have now died from the virus, 627 of those just since yesterday. It's incredible. 11 Alive's Mara Siriani spoke with the Metro Atlanta native now living in Atlanta. Brett Toman and his family have been living in Italy for the past six years, so it's safe to say they're pretty comfortable with living the day-to-day -day life there. However, on day 11 of the country's shutdown, they say their lives have been turned upside down. This is the Toman family. Brett is from Peachtree City and now lives in the town of Loretto, Italy. He owns a travel company, which is temporarily shut down. Brett says it started out as a soft lockdown, meaning Italians could only leave their homes for essential reasons. Now, he says they can only go to the grocery store or leave for health reasons, and you can only do this by yourself. If you can avoid this, uh, take the uh, self-distancing uh, you know, measurements seriously, because if you can self-distance now, you can avoid a total shutdown. And I the, the Italian, the government tried to tell us Italians, you know, we didn't do it. And for whatever reason, this thing caught on like fire and spread through the country. And now we're on total lockdown. And I don't want to see that happen to uh, my friends and family and people of Atlanta. And Brett says things are getting more strict by the day. He says, thankfully, his family is healthy. They're taking a lot of added precautions. But he does know people who have tested positive for the coronavirus. We have a live blog on 11alive.com posting the very latest information on the outbreak so you can find it quickly and you can find it easily. We're also sharing it on the 11 Alive News app. Scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just thought the they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. 
Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam. Virus is now leading the Treasury Department to push back the federal tax return deadline to July 15th. In a tweet, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says that all taxpayers will have this additional time to file and make payments without interest and or penalties. However, he recommends Americans still file as soon as possible, particularly if you are expecting a refund. We reached out to the state to ask whether state tax return deadlines would also be extended. We have not heard back yet. State legislators now among the Georgians in self-quarantine because of the virus. This week, State Senator Brandon Beach of Alpharetta told lawmakers he tested positive for COVID-19. Beach was in the Senate Monday when the legislature met in special session for nearly eight hours. Lawmakers learned Wednesday that Beach had symptoms dating into the previous week, and the state public health director urged them to self-quarantine. This is a good example of why we need people to follow us our advice, follow the advice of the medical provider. Brenna Beach has taken a lot of hits around Atlanta and around Georgia. Many of his peers have also uh, have been talking off the record about it, but he has not responded to our request for an interview. With people told to practice social distancing, businesses across Metro Atlanta are hurting. We spoke with one business owner today worried about the long-term effects of this. It was an absolutely gut-wrenching decision from a business perspective. The new normal for many of us has become a nightmare for local business owners forced to close their doors. We're just trying to take it day by day, and honestly, we're just trying to survive. Retail shop owner Mandy Rye was forced to close both of her vining stores due to the coronavirus escalation. We will probably start eating through our savings in about two weeks. Many owners like Mandy are left worried and wondering if their closures will be permanent. I don't know many, many small businesses that are going to be able to survive more than three to four weeks, if I'm being really, really honest. And it's not just the owners directly affected. It's a trickle-down effect. That's according to small business financial expert Andrew Paulus. So when restaurants are closed, the employees don't have a job. Uh, the accountant doesn't have work. Uh, the food vendors like Cisco aren't going to have food to sell. So this is a domino effect. Andrew has advice for local business owners feeling the pinch. Check with your agent or your insurance company. See if there's some sort of business interruption uh, in your policy uh, where you can apply uh, for revenue losses. That means the insurance company would effectively reimburse you. See how you can scale back. Um, aside from applying for an SBA loan, can you... Uh, stay around and, and stay in business by scaling back. Call your landlord up. Um, see if you can get a, uh, a couple months of rent abatement. And while we're asked to keep our distance, Andrew suggests owners come together. And everyone should be willing to work with everyone if we're all in it together to be able to survive and weather the storm. I know it's unknown and I know it's scary, but I just want to say look for the helpers. Whatever I can do for anybody, I'm here for you. And I, I really and encourage all small business owners to do that as well. We're watching that rain getting closer and closer to the city right now, and it's a broken line of showers. It's weakening a little bit as it moves our way, but it does have some rain with it, and we even have even have some reports of a little bit of gusty winds, especially from this one as it was moving out of Paulding County, now about to cross over, really pretty much over 75 between Kennesaw and Smyrna. We just had that update right there that's moving into northeastern parts of Cobb County with that little bit of moderate rain. We're not seeing any lightning out of this. 
We had some lightning with this back in Alabama and in West Georgia, but it's been weakening. We haven't seen as much. Now, North Hall County over into uh, parts of uh, southern Lumpkin County as well as White County. We have some rain here, a couple of pockets of moderate rain. Also some of that in Stevens County near Tacoa and then down to the south of I-20. Some showers near Carrollton right now. More of that moving into Cleveland County, northern parts of Randolph County back into Alabama. And then we have more rain back in Alabama to the north and west of Birmingham and then some lightning back here southwest of Birmingham. Again, all of this is showing signs of weakening as it moves our way. Take a look at this and go ahead and take a look at this full screen. I know it's kind of dark, but I wanted y'all to see this is our live look out of Cobb County as some of that rain is approaching uh, that area there at Truist Park. You see the Omni Hotel and I know it's hard to see in the dark, but that rain is closing in on the west side and the northern side of the perimeter. And that's going to be the progression of this system through the rest of the nighttime hours. This entire area of rain will keep moving toward us. And again, you don't really see anything too heavy heavy with this mainly light rain. There will be some pockets of moderate rain with it too. And the system continues to fall apart as it moves over to the east. We'll see it just kind of breaking up a little bit, but there could still be just a couple of lingering showers really early in the morning. Uh, this is at 645, a few showers here south and east of the city before everything moves on out. So the only chance for rain we see tomorrow is going to be really early in the morning. And even that is a chance for just a little bit of that lingering rain. Did you feel that warm air today? How did you like it? You know, we were just three degrees away from a record. The record for today's date is 86. We got up to 83, so we were really close to that. Athens, you tied the record today when it got up to 86 in your area. We should be around 66 for this time of year, so we were way above the average. No rain officially at Hartsfield Jackson. We've been talking all so much about that uh, rainfall surplus being over 11 inches. Now it's just under 11 inches, but still, that's a nice surplus to have here at this time of year. You can see the rain chances continuing through the overnight hours. By tomorrow morning, those rain chances are going to be coming down though, and temperatures are gonna be mild, lower 60s, maybe 59 for a low in the morning. Then we get up to 73 in the afternoon. We're gonna go with an eight on the wasometer tomorrow. That's our scale from one to 11, where 11 is a perfect day. Decreasing clouds during the day and more sunshine coming through in the afternoon. Here's another look. This is the RPM model showing those showers as they're coming through during the uh, late night hours and overnight. You see how it breaks up. And then by tomorrow morning, this is at seven, just a few of those scattered showers that we'll have in our area. They'll keep moving out and the clouds will decrease around lunchtime. A little more sunshine breaking through for the afternoon. So really not a bad day here for your Saturday, but it is going to be cooler than it was out there today. We got up, as I mentioned, 83 for high today. Tomorrow is going to be 73 degrees and then even cooler on Sunday at 64. And the rain chance coming back up to about 50%, 60% chance for showers on Monday. Tuesday, about a 50% chance for showers, maybe some thunder and lightning as those temperatures warm back into the 70s. And uh, Wednesday, the rain chance comes down to 30%. Right now, Thursday looks like the best day. Partly cloudy skies in 81, still lower 80s on Friday, and about a 30% chance for a shower in the afternoon Friday. How long can COVID-19 live on surfaces? Our Verified team breaks down the results of a new study that will help answer the questions. All it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta. Almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South, and it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home, from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot, full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. 
Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you... 11 Alive is committed to giving you facts, not fear. A new study from the National Institutes of Health is giving concrete numbers for how long this coronavirus can survive on different surfaces. Jason Puckett with our Verify team has the story. We're talking about a new study today because it gives us the first real data about how long this coronavirus can survive on surfaces. That's important because every number so far has been based on data from SARS in 2003. Now we aren't relying on an old virus anymore. So let's jump into the study and break down the facts of what it does and doesn't say. The research was done by the National Institutes of Health and CDC with scientists at Princeton and UCLA. So this chart shows the basic results. They tested five environments, aerosol, copper, cardboard, stainless steel, and plastic. The main findings, that it can remain aerosolized or in the air for up to three hours. That it can survive on stainless steel or plastic for 72 hours, cardboard for about 24 hours, or copper for about four hours. So these numbers represent how long the virus can survive, but that doesn't mean that it always will. We know the virus's survivability is impacted by outside factors like temperature and humidity, but this test was in a controlled environment temperature between 70 to 73 degrees and 40 percent humidity. That means that in a perfect lab environment, the virus can survive this long. But in a real world situation, those other factors could lower survivability. The main takeaway, that we should be cautious of most surfaces right now, even ones like copper. And make sure you avoid touching your face and mouth. And as always, keep on washing your hands. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. As cases spread here in Georgia, we keep hearing from people saying they can't get tested. What I reveal investigators found still to come on prime time. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, Good guys didn't Aww, finish. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. 
it didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Lil Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so. Times like these, Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers in honor of his birthday today. We did just that. Dr. Ashley Hosey, a principal at Cobb County Elementary School, has found a way to keep his students connected during the school closures. Here's Elvin Lopez. That's right. We have made it to a Friday. Now, it may not seem like a Friday because we've been off all week. But it's still Friday, and we still celebrate the things that keep us into our normal, okay? A familiar face for Pittner Elementary School students who were out of school on an unexpected break as COVID-19 closed the doors of classrooms across the state. It's actually just really um, great to know that somebody's caring about us. Fifth grader Ansley Carter is talking about her principal, Dr. Ashley Hosey, who has turned his basement into a studio. Pittner News Network with the help of his two children, Donovan. Hi, my name's Donovan, and I'm going to tell you a joke. And Cassidy. You need to be creative this two weeks, and this is how I'm doing it. So I thought this would be a great idea to uh, give some consistency to our students' routine and to let them know that, hey, your principal's still out there, They're, we're still connected as a school, and we're still one school family. Even with guest appearances from his dog. This is my dog, Shuri. As well as other students like Ansley. Back to you, Dr. Hosey. All in an effort to give students consistency in an uncertain time. It keeps us connected because we don't know how long we're going to be out. But one thing that can be sure is that they'll have a PNN News every morning, uh, just like we're at school. The kids can hear from their principal that they know that in case no one else has told them that they're special or that they care about them or that they love them, that I think they're special. I care about them. And Dr. Hosey, that's this guy right here. I love each and every one of them. Dr. Hosey says his newscast will continue to be more interactive, asking students to participate remotely like he did with Ansley. He also says he will continue to broadcast for as long as the students are out of school and as long as his great German shepherd will allow him. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. With the number of coronavirus cases in Georgia increasing by the day, tonight we have 485 confirmed cases out of the 50 counties. The State Department of Public Health also reporting 14 deaths as of 7 tonight. You know, as this outbreak continues to grow, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases is warning Americans will likely have to stay at home and practice social distancing for at least the next several weeks. A local pandemic expert echoing the same sentiment when he spoke with 11 Alive's Joe Hankey today. To learn more about the growth currently of COVID-19 in Georgia, I talked today with Dr. Carlos Del Rio over Skype to practice social distancing. He's an expert when it comes to the topic of pandemics. He's also the chair of the Global Health Department at Emory University and the dean overseeing physicians at Grady Memorial Hospital. One case infects two to three people. Then two to three people infect four to six people. Four to six, you know, and on and on and on and on. Now, for the next few seconds, I need you to pretend that one individual kernel here of popcorn equals a single confirmed case of COVID-19 in Georgia. These are the only cases the Georgia Department of Public Health reported in the state back on March 2nd. Two cases in Fulton County, and this would be one week ago, 42 cases statewide. Yesterday, 287 total cases. And now today, 420 cases. And Dr. Del Rio says at this point, the growth of COVID-19 is considered exponential. The only way to slow it down is social distancing, keeping at least six feet between you and everyone else when you're out, or just a better idea, stay home. I mean, I 
I was hearing somebody was still having a wedding next weekend. You know, I'm really pleased that Mayor uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, you know, passed an executive order closing restaurants, bars, gathering places, gyms, etc. But we need every mayor in the state, and we need the governor to do that. We really have to take this seriously. Dr. Del Rio told me in his personal opinion, currently because of under testing statewide for the virus and its current growth, we are on pace in the next two weeks to reach 2,500 to 3,000 cases. And when the Georgia Department of Public Health updated their numbers for COVID-19 cases in Georgia today, they said it is now in 50 of Georgia's 159 counties. Dr. Del Rio said even if your county is not on that list, though, it is best to just imagine that it is already there and play it as safe as possible. You know, one of the reasons we're seeing more cases of the official numbers is that testing has now expanded. But still, people with symptoms and underlying health conditions are telling us they cannot get anyone to swab them for testing. Brendan Keefe investigates. <coughs> well, they diagnosed it as pneumonia. Add Melissa Spielholtz to the list of at-risk patients who can't get a COVID-19 test. You would qualify for a test under the current protocol, right? I've had symptoms that are very textbook to what they're saying the symptoms are <coughs> and they're not testing me. So how many of me are there out there? These are some of the signs outside doctor's offices warning the sick not to enter. Some send patients to state hotlines. You can't get a human on the phone. It basically directs you back to your physician and your physician directs you to the hotline. I mean, it was an absolute circle. The reproductive rate of the COVID-19 virus with minimal interventions is expected to be around two. That means the average infected person can be expected to infect two more people. But that progression isn't two, two four, four, six, six eight, 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 ten. ten. The number is compounded. That means one person infects two, two people. people, two people infect four, four people. people four people infect eight, eight people, eight people, eight people infect 16, 16 people, 16 people, 16 people infect 30, 32, 32 people, people, 32 people infect 64, 64, 64, 64 people, people, 64 people infect 128, 128 people. That means if one infected person who doesn't need medical attention stays out of the hospital, out of the doctor's office, stays at home, they can keep themselves from infecting hundreds, hundreds of, of people. people. Millions of people are heeding the call, staying inside from coast to coast with some cities and entire states ordering their citizens to shelter in place indefinitely. The guidelines for testing are inconsistent. It's up to your doctor, but there's no requirement that any office or facility has to offer coronavirus testing. The fact that one of our biggest hospital groups is only testing employees speaks volumes. Um, you know, they don't want the healthcare workers to get sick, which while it's understandable, it's not doing the public any good. Melissa ultimately got an at-home swab kit, which the lab picked up in person. Self-tests are not yet FDA approved, but some at-risk patients with symptoms say they're left with no other choice. <coughs> in Atlanta, I'm Brendan Keefe. You know, viewers are telling 11 Alive that some hospitals are still using foreign travel as a prerequisite for testing months after the first cases were reported in the United States. All right, we're going to get back to our coverage of the coronavirus outbreak in just a moment. But first, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb tracking some showers tonight, huh? Yeah, we're watching some of that rain that's moving in. It's not an impressive line of showers or thunderstorms coming our way. There was a little bit of lightning in Alabama, some of that over toward West Georgia earlier. But as this is getting closer to the Atlanta area, it's breaking up. So I want you to expect some showers tonight, maybe some rumbles of thunder, flashes of lightning, but that's really on the low end. You see my phone right here. I am talking with, uh, oh, let's say over 300 people right now on Facebook Live. They're letting me know where they're seeing rain. We're talking about the weekend outlook, and a lot of people are talking about that pollen too. And I don't think this rain is going to be heavy enough to totally wash out the pollen. It may actually stir things up a little bit more. We need a good long soaking rain to, to knock those pollen counts back down. You can see some of the showers though. Again, not really a, an organized defined line that's moving through. These are just broken areas of rain, a lot of light stuff with a couple of pockets of heavier rain like this in Carroll County, moving into the southern parts of Douglas County, spotty showers here on the north side, a couple of other pockets of moderate rain north of Gainesville uh, in uh, parts of White County and into uh, Habersham County as well. Stevens County, Franklin County had a little bit of that earlier. Also up in Ella J, a few scattered showers there. And then south of I-20, 
We have this cell near Carrollton that's moving over to the east. That'll push into South Fulton in just a little while. And then additional rain back into Alabama. There's a little bit of that thunder and lightning, but most of this is going to continue to weaken as it moves our way. Take a live look out there right now. This is what we're watching. This is our live camera in Rome where we see uh, those wet roads and some of the raindrops that are on the lens. Stay with us. We will uh, give you a timeline of this rain and we're going to talk about whether or not this will be out of here by the time we wake up tomorrow morning. All right, Chris, thank you, sir. You know, both uh, of Georgia's U.S. Senators are under fire for allegedly trying to profit from the coronavirus pandemic. Records show that Senators Kelly Leffler and David Perdue bought and sold stocks shortly after a private Senate briefing on the virus. 11 Alive's Doug Richards explains. In the days before he showed up at the state capitol March 2nd to sign up for re-election, Republican Senator David Perdue's financial portfolio was very active according to reports Purdue filed with the U.S. Senate Ethics Office. And in that same time period, the same records show that Republican Senator Kelly Leffler and her husband Jeff Sprecher were even more active. All following a private U.S. Senate briefing January 24th on the spreading threat of the coronavirus. Records show Leffler and her husband, whose company owns the U.S. Stock Exchange, sold stock valued between $1.3 and $3.1 million in the weeks before the market tanked. Records show that Purdue didn't sell nearly that much, but he did purchase between $63,000 and $245,000 worth of stock in Pfizer, a pharmaceutical company now developing a coronavirus vaccine. The records show only a range, not exact amounts. The transactions are raising questions about whether Georgia's two wealthy U.S. senators are getting even richer with early knowledge of the virus's threat. Were you trading on inside information about what was coming? Leffler spoke to Fox yeah, I'm, News I'm at really midday. I'm only informed of my transactions after they occur several weeks. So certainly those transactions, okay. at least on my behalf, were a mix of buys and sells, very routine for my portfolio. Purdue echoed that, saying, I've had an outside professional that manages my personal finances and I'm not involved in the day-to-day. -day. Their opponents seized quickly. Seeking to unseat Purdue, Democrat John Ossoff called his stock trades pandemic profiteering. And seeking to unseat Leffler, Democrat Raphael Warnock wrote, profiting off this disaster is unconscionable. And Leffler opponent Republican Doug Collins wrote, I'm sickened just thinking about it. You know, people working near a cluster of cases in a small community tell 11 Alive they feel like they're being forced to choose between their own personal safety and their livelihood. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross spoke with a, a local stylist just miles from the outbreak in Bartow County. When people are feeling bad, there's two places they go. One's the doctor, the other's the hairdresser. Shay Ray has been a hairdresser for 38 years, and her clients are like her family. She says telling them she can't see them is hard. We implemented safety measures where people waited in their car, texts came in one at a time. She's an independent contractor and says over the past week, it's been stressful trying to figure out how to still make money while staying safe. There's plenty of us out there, single families. One, our only income is this job, which we love, and we love our clients. They're like our family. She says they have not received guidance from the state about what they're supposed to do when they work in a business that demands they're close to other people. Just yesterday, Governor Brian Kemp said he would not force businesses to close down. We're waiting and, and hoping for a mandatory shutdown so that we could have some type of compensation. Without a mandate, she doesn't think she's eligible for unemployment, even though she's concerned about her safety while working. According to the Department of Public Health, there are at least six confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Floyd County and 40 in Bartow. The numbers that we know versus the numbers that are printed and reported differ. So we also wonder about that. The Bartow County Health Department stressed the numbers provided by the state are not in real time. And Shea says most everyone she knows knows someone who is quarantined. So today she made the tough decision to shut down. I'm not willing to risk my life and my family, nor my clients. Tonight, we're learning how this outbreak is impacting people's paychecks all across our country. Here's Cheryl Prehine.
Eleven Alive's exclusive Survey USA poll shows about 44 percent of people who work outside the house still have to go in to work. Only 10 percent say they're working from home some days. 16 percent are now working remotely every day. About a quarter of people have had their hours cut. Nine percent have been laid off. Two percent say they've lost their jobs altogether. We know a lot of folks out there are looking for answers and assistance during these tough economic times, folks. So you can find instructions on how to file for unemployment, plus the list of local businesses and organizations offering help for you. And it's on our 11 Alive app and on our website at 11alive.com. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb is live on Facebook as we speak, taking all of your weather questions. You can join the conversation right now on his Facebook page. We're going to catch up with him after the break. And we're going to bring you updates on the coronavirus outbreak all three hours of primetime news on the air and on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. we got more 11 Alive news primetime after the break. Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. First for our state, athens Clark is now the first county in Georgia to order people to shelter in place 24-7. Mayor Kelly Gert says he thinks it is necessary to save lives in the long run. Liza Lucas joins us to explain you had a chance to talk to the mayor. I did. We spoke this morning. Mayor Gertz tells me the order to stay at home is critical to support hospitals and health care workers. Under any normal circumstance, things are already tough. Under these very critical crisis circumstances, things are even more difficult. And so we have to use every measure to make people practice social distancing and keep the spread of the COVID-19 virus from happening. The shelter in place order requires people to stay at home with a few exceptions. That includes necessary errands like going to the grocery store or pharmacy, medical treatment, and outdoor activity, which is also allowed with conditions. Now, first responders are exempt from the new rules, and there are allowances for those who work on public works and other infrastructure jobs. Meanwhile, essential businesses that will stay open include hospitals, healthcare facilities, grocery stores, convenience stores, gas stations, and laundromats, restaurants, but only for delivery or for takeout. According to the mayor, the shelter-in-place order is in effect until at least April 7th. The order also includes a $3 million business nonprofit individual relief fund to help with the economic impact. Today, the doctor helping lead the coronavirus task force for our country, Dr. Burke, said there is more and more information that illnesses may be much more severe in younger people than originally thought. Most are recovering, but there are critical cases, people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s without pre-existing conditions. Conditions. This is an important conversation for us to have. Somebody tweeted me today saying, sorry, this is an old person's problem and I have to go about my life. My sister's 36 years old. Think about April Abernathy and her husband, Kyle, who live in Floyd County. She is still on a ventilator. She'd been on life support. Now for the first time, able to squeeze someone's hand when they talk to her. Her sister says she knows people aren't taking it very seriously even still. They didn't either until COVID-19 arrived on their doorstep. I mean, they were just going about their daily lives. And so it was a huge shock that 
this hit them and hit them as hard as it did. The Georgia Department of Health's newest numbers say 41 percent of cases are ages 18 to 59. This information is not meant to scare anyone. It's just to give you information you need to make the best and safest decisions for you and the people you love and for the community as a whole. In a time people feel helpless, this is a way we can all be empowered to do something that matters. Take the precautions outlined from doctors. It helps so many people around you. It is something to keep considering. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers on my phone still with just under 200 people on Facebook Live right now. We're tracking this rain that is moving through North Georgia, pushing into Metro Atlanta. Not that impressive. There are a couple of pockets of moderate rain with it. We've had a little bit of heavy rain at some spots, but the whole system is weakening as it moves in. Just expect some showers now and during the uh, late night hours and overnight before things start tapering off early tomorrow. Here's what we're watching on radar and here in Atlanta, you know, we had some pretty good showers that were moving through earlier. Right now, a good cell right there on the Carroll and Southern Douglas line that has some moderate rain with it. Just little spotty showers here in Atlanta. As you move up to the north and east, you see additional showers. This one near Gainesville right there on the Hall and Jackson County line just to the west of I-85. Pretty good shower there. Also Southern Dawson County. One of our folks on Facebook Live was talking about up in LJ. They just got a good downpour. We're seeing that right there with the yellow up around LJ. So they're confirming what we're seeing on radar. And then in Stevens County and Toccoa, also into Habersham County, a few of those showers. South of I-20, Douglas County, we mentioned that near the Carrollton area. And then more of this rain in Alabama. That's just going to keep feeding our way. A little thunder and lightning in West Alabama, but the trend has been with these showers coming in from Alabama, they've been weakening as they get closer to Georgia. Take a look at this full screen. This is another view at our live tower cam in the Rome area, showing the wet roads as those showers move through there just a little bit earlier. And they're still getting just a few light showers in the Rome area, uh, even as we speak. So you can kind of see those showers as they continue to move on through the Rome area. Now, a lot of questions on Facebook Live about the pollen count. Look at this. It is 1668. That is the highest pollen count that we have had so far this year. This rain that's coming through, I don't think that's going to be enough to totally wash out the pollen. Um, sometimes when you get showers like this, it might stir up a, a little bit more. You need a good long soaking rain in order for these numbers to come down. Pine, oak, birch, sweet gum, and hackberry are the main tree pollens. Grass pollens are low. Weeds are low, but the weeds um, that are causing the pollen are sheep sorrel and the mold is on the high end. I think that's what's impacting me. I usually feel it when the mold counts are high. So just see a few scattered showers out there tonight. Nothing particularly heavy and by tomorrow morning those rain chances actually start decreasing by nine o'clock. We think the rain's out of here and even early on Saturday morning. Most places are going to be drying out. Let's say at seven in the morning and then everything moves on over to the east. And then we'll see decreasing clouds during the day. High temperatures up to about 73 degrees on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. We're going to go with an 8 on the wasometer. Here's that rain. You see that it's moving through now. 3 in the morning, just a few scattered showers in the area. 7 in the morning, most of it is gone. But there you can see a little bit of green indicating where we might have a few raindrops still lingering early in the morning. But if you sleep late enough, you won't even see that out there. Things start drying out. During the morning hours at noon, we're dry. The sun starts breaking through and more sunshine in the afternoon, too. It's going to be different tomorrow with the temperatures, though. Today was 83. Tomorrow, with this northerly flow will be cooler with highs right around 73 and even cooler on Sunday at 64. A little wedge is going to try to start setting up and we'll see a few showers developing. Monday, 69 for a high, a better chance for some rain around Tuesday. Showers, maybe a thunder showers. We get back into the 70s and then a 30% chance for showers Wednesday. Thursday looks like the best day dry and warming back up to 81. Lower 80s as well on Friday, but back to a 30% chance for some scattered showers. The Girl Scouts of Atlanta are holding virtual troop meetings asking for $20 donation to share boxes of cookies with elderly care facilities, firefighters, and police officers. Everything will be okay. It's the unofficial motto of Dunwoody, and one resident is taking that sentiment to the streets. And check out this chalk creation, a child's sweet mural on the sidewalk to share with the walkers in the neighborhood, and they want others to do the same have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive.
televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. Senator Kelly Leffler is among a group of U.S. senators who reportedly sold off a combined millions of dollars in stock prior to the market crash from the virus pandemic. Some of Senator Leffler and her husband's stock was sold on January 24th, the same day the Senate Health Committee received a briefing on coronavirus. Senator Leffler responded to the reports today saying she and her husband do not make their own investment decisions because of their roles in the New York Stock Exchange, and she was not informed of the sales until mid-February. Joining me right now is Chuck Todd, moderator of Meet the Press. Chuck, at the very least, and I've read her defense today and what she had to say, at the very least, 18 days after you take the oath, you find yourself mired in this, and that's her watch. I mean, the, the optics on this, right. pretty bad. It's a bad look in a bad, at, a, at a bad period of time, right? At a bad point, especially when um, there has been this debate of, of when did the federal, you know, how soon did the federal government know and, and, and all of that. So in some ways, both Senator Luffler and the senator from North Carolina that also has been drawn up in some questionable stock trades as well, Richard Burr there in, in North Carolina, I think you have, you have sort of pent up, you know, anger out there. And that's what makes this, I think, politically so lethal for both of them and why I think they both try to be aggressive in trying to answer the criticism and deal with this. I, I, I think she's got her own primary opponent that she's got to worry about and that uh, with, with, uh, with Doug Collins. So uh, I've, been, I've been intrigued by how, how much she has been public about trying to defend herself here. I think that is an acknowledgement of how politically lethal it could be against her. Is that survivable in your estimation? I ask me again in six weeks. Yeah. I, I don't. I think this is such a this is such a monumental event we're going through as a nation. It's such a monumental event we're going through culturally, economically, uh, on health, and politically. Um, I certainly think that there will be retribution against any politician, left or right, that didn't seem to be on top of this. Right. This is one of those things that, that is sticky to people. They don't like it. It is this feeling like, oh, you're out of touch. You're the elite. That's what makes it, especially for someone who's self-funding a race, you know, you want to be a man or a woman of the people. When you're wealthy, you, you better not get caught looking like you were getting a, a, a sweetheart deal because you're wealthy, right? Insider access or insider this or insider that. So it is certainly a lethal political attack, potentially. It's why I think she, in a day that you would normally, I think, duck and cover, um, she chose to, to, try to, to try to at least um, 
put her, get her side of the story out. L let's talk briefly about coronavirus here at the federal level. It would seem that the U.S. government continues to fly blind in this sense. We don't know how many people have the virus. Mm -hmm. We really don't know the genesis of it entirely. Th there are so many questions with this, uh, yeah. of, of, of which the government now is, is you know, on their heels collectively, tr trying to figure out what the mm -hmm. proper response is straight across the board. Jeff, it starts with the agency that's headquartered in your city right now. I mean, this, the, you know, the CDC, I mean, there's a reason you don't see any representatives from the CDC in the national response anymore. I think there is sort of a, a trust problem that is built there. I mean, if you're looking for where this went wrong at the beginning, it, it's with testing. And that's why we're flying blind. And it's, and it's why the federal response is on its heels. It's why we're in this uncertain, where should we shut down, where shouldn't we shut down? It's because the initial process on testing didn't work. It broke down. Why it broke down, I don't think we have the full story yet. And I think we're gonna con that is going to continue to come out as this story unfolds. But that is why we're not sure where do we need to surge medical supplies? Where do we need to put the USS Comfort? Does it need to be in LA or New York or Seattle, right? I mean, where are we going to need the extra beds first? Not knowing where this virus was early on put us in this situation that we're now in this sort of nationalized uh, lockdown that we're, that we're kind of sort of in. And I say kind of sort of because it really does depend on the state that you live. Yeah, absolutely. Chuck, thanks. We appreciate it. Have a good weekend. You got it, bud. Thank you, Jeff. All right, straight ahead. The need is greater than ever, but is it safe for you to donate blood during the coronavirus outbreak? Our Verify team has the answer for you next. I just That's feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11
We are committed to bring you updates on the COVID-19 pandemic all three hours of primetime news and every weeknight on 11 Alive's only 7 p.m. newscast. As of now, three states have ordered residents to stay home, Illinois and New York, now joining California. The lockdown impacts about 70 million people in our country. Tax day is being pushed back to July, but uh, that's for right now. That only applies to your federal income taxes. And uh, USA Swimming is asking organizers to postpone the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. You're going to find more of these stories on our website at 11alive.com. More than 350 cruise ship passengers flown to Atlanta today after being stranded off the coast of France. The cruise ship was uh, finally allowed to dock in France yesterday. The governor's office confirms three passengers tested positive but are not showing any symptoms. Another 13 are sick but have not been tested just yet. 70 of the passengers are Canadians. They're being uh, taken to Dobbins Air Reserve Base for quarantine. You know, the city of Cartersville is working to contain the spread of COVID-19. Since last week, Cartersville Medical Center says it had at least 32 patients test positive for the virus. As of last night, 12 were still in the hospital. 39 patients were awaiting test results. This is why health experts keep emphasizing social distancing because several of those cases are believed to have been tied back to a church service a couple of weeks ago. Right now, no visitors are allowed in most parts of the hospital. Doctors say this is the best way to ensure staff and other patients remain virus free. Another cluster of cases in southwest Georgia is leading to a metro Atlanta County to take some action. The Cherokee County Marshal's Office is urging people to limit who attends funeral services now. Nick Sturdivant explains the impact. For most funeral services, it's a time for people to gather and console each other. However, Cherokee County officials want people in funeral homes to be safe in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office says recently the Marshal's Office reached out to funeral homes and providers recommending they follow the CDC's recommendation, asking that funeral homes not have more than 10 people at a time in a room for visitations and services. They told me this is in response to what happened in Doherty County, where evidence suggests two funerals may be tied to eight cases and expose several other people to the virus. This, this isn't a law. We're not going to arrest people because they've got 12 people at their funeral. We're just asking people to, this is a, this is a different time. And we're under a different set of circumstances than normal. So it's really been a harder transition for families not being able to have all of their friends and loved ones. And the sheriff's office was very clear. This is not a ban on funeral services. They just want to limit the number of people that attend these services. So telling people to limit who attends funerals, weddings, and other major moments in life might make you feel uneasy. But experts say it helps flatten the curve of the outbreak through social distancing. This red line is what the uh, number of the coronavirus cases would look like if we did not cancel anything and just went about our daily lives. The number of cases would skyrocket, potentially overwhelming our hospitals. Since the virus spreads through person-to-person -person contact, experts believe if we distance ourselves from others and stay away from crowds, we could spread new cases out all over a longer period of time, basically buying time for our doctors and nurses to treat people who need it the most. Right now, hospitals across our country have urgent messages and they need more supplies to fight the coronavirus. NBC's Alice Barr shows us how the government is producing more medical masks, gowns and ventilators and sending them where they're needed most. A crisis within a crisis as hospitals brace for a growing wave of coronavirus patients an urgent shortage of medical supplies is rapidly compounding the threat. We literally will not have the things we need to save people's lives. The mayor of New York City, now the U.S. epicenter of the virus, calling on the federal government to order more supplies made and bring in the military to deliver them. President Trump saying today he is invoking the Federal Defense Production Act, specifically to speed production of those much needed supplies. To use the powers of the federal government to help the states get things that they need. New York's governor promising financial incentives to private companies that start making medical gloves, gowns, masks, and most importantly, ventilators. The ventilators are to this war what missiles were to wo World War II. 
Right now, the U.S. has just 46,000 ICU beds across the whole country, but at least 200,000 people could need ICU care, according to Johns Hopkins University. And it's not just hospitals. Firefighters now raising the alarm. They don't have enough protective gear to safely respond to calls. We are the first link in the public health care chain, and when we lose the ability to protect that initial first link, we're in a dangerous situation. A call to arms to protect the protectors on the front lines of the war against coronavirus. Our team of investigators is digging into reports that there is a shortage of supplies in the metro Atlanta area at our hospitals. And they've been reaching out to facilities all across Atlanta and discovered where there's a need for more personal protective equipment and what we can all do to help those doctors and patients. That story tonight on Up Late at 11 on our sister station, 11 Alive. We are tracking showers as they move east through the area, and as they push to the east, they're really kind of falling apart. Uh, not as much rain as they've had back into Alabama. They've not only been falling apart, but also weakening. We had a little bit of thunder and lightning back in Alabama earlier, but we're not seeing as any of that coming into Atlanta. You can see this light shower on the west side, just west of the perimeter, south of, um, of 285, south of I-20, actually, right on the Fulton and Douglas County line that's moving up toward the north and east. We'll see that move through the city in a little bit with just a few raindrops. A few scattered showers as well north and east of the city, north end of Lake Lanier, moving up toward Dawson County, Lumpkin County, uh, also into parts of White County, seeing some of that, and into areas of Banks County, a few lighter showers. And around Ella J, pretty good coverage of rain. That was confirmed by uh, someone on our Facebook Live a little while ago. And then also in West Georgia, out I-20, you can see there in Polk County, a few scattered showers, more of that back in to Alabama near Talladega and then even more back into West Alabama. So all this is going to keep feeding our way during the overnight hours, but we don't expect anything severe out of that. Most likely not even any thunder and lightning, just a, a few areas of rain, maybe getting moderate to heavy at times overnight. Here's a look at what we're watching as we go through uh, the rest of the nighttime hours tonight. You know, guys, it was uh, pretty warm today. How about that? 83 for a high. We were three degrees away from the record. The record is 86, set in 1907. Athens, you did break the record today, getting up to 86 degrees. Stay with us. We're going to track when this rain moves out and then also talk about the cooler air that's coming in behind this system. In fact, tomorrow's high about 10 degrees lower than we were today at about 73. Stay with us. We'll talk more about that coming up. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. As the number of coronavirus cases continues to climb, so does the need for healthy blood donors. The American Red Cross and local blood banks are desperate for donations, but is it really safe to do that during this outbreak? Our Verify team has the answer. Misinformation about COVID-19 has been circulating on social media, and that's why the Verify team is here. We're going to take your questions to vetted experts to get you the facts. Consider this. The American Red Cross says thousands of blood drives have been canceled amid fears of the virus. That's putting even more strain on an already short supply. So let's verify. Is it safe to donate blood during the pandemic? Here are sources. The American Red Cross, the U.S. Surgeon General, the Food and Drug Administration. It is definitely safe to donate. And Terry Craddock, the Senior Director at Inova Blood Services. They all say, do not cancel your appointment. Just as we're taking care of our, our COVID-19 patients, there's still all those other patients, our cancer patients, our cardiac patients who rely on blood products. That hasn't gone away. So the need is definitely there, but is it safe? Innova and the Red Cross say they're taking extra precautions to try and protect patients. Beds are placed six feet apart and wiped down between every donor. Chairs in the waiting rooms are spaced out. The Red Cross is also checking temperatures for employees and donors. Meanwhile, the U.S. Surgeon General and the FDA are encouraging anyone who's healthy to give blood. So we can verify, yes, blood banks and health officials are given the green light to donate blood during this pandemic. A message, a stern message from the state of Illinois. The governor there has now issued a stay home order for all non-essential workers. This comes less than 24 hours after New York Governor Andrew Cuomo issued a similar order. The state of California also under a stay at home order. As of yesterday, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp told us that the, uh, the state does not have any plans to issue shelter in place orders for now. 
As Americans continue to struggle to get a handle on the coronavirus, another country is dealing with uh, some heavy blows, and that is Italy. More than 4,000 people have now died from that virus, and get this, 627 of those just since yesterday. 11 Allies Mara Siriani spoke with a Metro Atlanta native now living in Italy. Brett Toman and his family have been living in Italy for the past six years, so it's safe to say they're pretty comfortable with living the day-to-day -day life there. However, on day 11 of the country's shutdown, they say their lives have been turned upside down. This is the Toman family. Brett is from Peachtree City and now lives in the town of Loretto, Italy. He owns a travel company, which is temporarily shut down. Brett says it started out as a soft lockdown, meaning Italians could only leave their homes for essential reasons. Now, he says they can only go to the grocery store or leave for health reasons, and you can only do this by yourself. If you can avoid this, um, take the uh, self-distancing uh, you know, measurements seriously, because if you can self-distance now, you can avoid a total shutdown. And I the Italian, the government tried to tell us Italians, you know, we didn't do it. And for whatever reason, this thing caught on like fire and spread through the country. And now we're on total lockdown. And I don't want to see that happen to uh, my friends and family and people of Atlanta. And Brett says things are getting more strict by the day. He says, thankfully, his family is healthy. They're taking a lot of added precautions, but he does know people who have tested positive for the coronavirus. And remember, we have a live blog on 11alive.com posting the latest information on the outbreak so you can uh, find it quickly and easily. And we're also uh, sharing it on our 11alive news app. If it's in your neighborhood, it's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this today. Ooh, did I not text you? All right. I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. I You're consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish. Oh, Jess, oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere <laughs> along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. okay, right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be Slimming, Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting.
quarantine because of the virus. This week, State Senator Brandon Beach of Alpharetta told lawmakers that he Good Lord, for COVID-19. Beach was uh, in the Senate Monday when the legislature met in a special session for nearly eight hours. Lawmakers learned Wednesday that Beach had symptoms dating into the previous week and the state public health director urged them to self-quarantine. This is a good example of why we need people to follow us our advice, follow the advice of their medical provider. Senator Beach has not responded to our request for an interview. You know, with people told to practice social distancing, businesses across Metro Atlanta are hurting, as you can imagine. So we spoke with one business owner today worried about the long-term effects. Jeff Hollinger reports. It was an absolutely gut-wrenching decision from a business perspective. The new normal for many of us has become a nightmare for local business owners forced to close their doors. We're just trying to take it day by day, and honestly, we're just trying to survive. Retail shop owner Mandy Rye was forced to close both of her vining stores due to the coronavirus escalation. We will probably start eating through our savings in about two weeks. Many owners like Mandy are left worried and wondering if their closures will be permanent. I don't know many, many small businesses that are going to be able to survive more than three to four weeks, if I'm being really, really honest. And it's not just the owners directly affected. It's a trickle-down effect. That's according to small business financial expert Andrew Paulus. So when restaurants are closed, the employees don't have a job. Uh, the accountant doesn't have work. Uh, the food vendors like Cisco aren't going to have food to sell. So this is a domino effect. Andrew has advice for local business owners feeling the pinch. Check with your agent or your insurance company. See if there's some sort of business interruption uh, in your policy uh, where you can apply uh, for revenue losses. That means the insurance company would effectively reimburse you. See how you can scale back. Um, aside from applying for an SBA loan, can you uh, stay around and, and stay in business by scaling back. Call your landlord up. Um, see if you can get a, uh, a couple months of rent abatement. And while we're asked to keep our distance, Andrew suggests owners come together. And everyone should be willing to work with everyone if we're all in, in it together to be able to survive and weather the storm. I know it's unknown and I know it's scary, but I just want to say look for the helpers. Whatever I can do for anybody, I'm here for you. And I, I really and encourage all small business owners to do that as well. We're still tracking some of that rain that's moving through the area. A lot of it is breaking up as it moves to the east. We've had just a few spotty showers around here in Atlanta. More of the rain has been up in North Georgia and over in West Georgia and also back into Alabama. And you can see how in Atlanta we're okay now. Over on the west side, we have a lone shower that's right at I-20 and 285 there on the west side near the Douglas and Fulton County line. We had some showers north and east of us. Some of that's still in North Hall, southern parts of White County, and then a little better coverage of this rain from Ella J uh, in Gilmer County, up into Fannin County, Towns in Union County, getting in on some of that over North Georgia toward Dalton, Murray County, Dade Walker, over toward Tatuga County, a better coverage of rain. And then on the west side, a little bit more coming in from Alabama, right along I-20 and north of that in, in uh, Polk County and Harrelson County. And then also over toward Talladega, another area of rain that's going to be moving through as well. Now, these aren't particularly strong, nothing severe out of these, even a little bit of thunder and lightning in West Alabama, but that uh, tends to be weakening as it gets closer to the Atlanta area. Now, I mentioned these showers up in North Georgia. Let me take you out there live right now, and you can see what we're watching. This is in Blue Ridge. I just moved the camera over a little bit so we could get a better look at the pavement, which shows where we have the reflection of the lights there due to the water on the road from some of the rain uh, that has been moving through in downtown Blue Ridge. So it's a little wetter there. Here in Atlanta, we're not wet. And in fact, remember earlier, we were telling you that that marginal risk or level one risk was in West Georgia. But I mentioned earlier, I wasn't really impressed with that because I was expecting these showers to weaken. Well, the Storm Prediction Center has now taken out that marginal risk. We're all in just the general showers and thunder showers, and we don't expect anything severe tonight. It got hot out there today. 83 degrees was our high temperature this afternoon. We started off mild in the 60s, and those temperatures were climbing today. I know this just shows 82, but we bumped up to 83 in between these hourlies. And then we're st we've been holding in the 70s for much of the evening hours, but now we're going to start pushing down into the 60s. 
as we go through late night and overnight and then pretty much start off right around 60 degrees early in the morning. We still have 75 in Athens. Athens, you tied a record today, getting up to 86 degrees over the next 12 hours. You can see these temperatures as they start falling just a little bit, kind of mild into the 60s. We'll have a little bit of that rain overnight, but by seven in the morning, it's only a 20% chance for a shower. And then by nine o'clock, we think the rain's out of here. So in your weather headlines, we're drying out during the day on Saturday. It's also going to be a little bit cooler with temperatures about 10 degrees lower tomorrow than we were today, going down to about to 73. And then more showers will return into our area on Sunday. And it's going to stay cool on Sunday as well with highs near 64, 69 Monday showers still with us on Tuesday. We're back to the lower 70s and we'll see 50% chance for showers, 30% chance on Wednesday. Thursday looks like the best day with dry weather conditions before scattered showers return Friday with temperatures returning to the lower 80s by the end of the week. All right, thanks, Chris. You know, as always, folks, 11 Alive is committed to giving you facts, not fear. A new study from the National Institutes of Health is giving concrete numbers for how long this coronavirus can survive on different surfaces. Jason Puckett with our Verify team has that story for you. We're talking about a new study today because it gives us the first real data about how long this coronavirus can survive on surfaces. That's important because every number so far has been based on data from SARS in 2003. Now we aren't relying on an old virus anymore. So let's jump into the study and break down the facts of what it does and doesn't say. The research was done by the National Institutes of Health and CDC with scientists at Princeton and UCLA. So this chart shows the basic results. They tested five environments, aerosol, copper, cardboard, stainless steel, and plastic. The main findings, that it can remain aerosolized or in the air for up to three hours. That it can survive on stainless steel or plastic for 72 hours, cardboard for about 24 hours, or copper for about four hours. So these numbers represent how long the virus can survive, but that doesn't mean that it always will. We know the virus's survivability is impacted by outside factors like temperature and humidity, but this test was in a controlled environment. Temperature between 70 to 73 degrees and 40% humidity. That means that in a perfect lab environment, the virus can survive this long. But in a real world situation, those other factors could lower survivability. The main takeaway, that we should be cautious of most surfaces right now, even ones like copper. And make sure you avoid touching your face and mouth. And as always, keep on washing your hands. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Cross Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristine, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, 
great. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram. I will see you on Up Late at 11 on our sister station on 11 Alive. But for now, Jeff Hollinger, Aisha Howard is going to keep this primetime train running. We're going to see them in just a couple of minutes. Have a good night. footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Uplink? Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would yeah. wait the next week. You're oh, all, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt live from atlanta 11 alive at 10 on the atl starts now all right, just in at 10 on this Friday night, a second state senator has tested positive for 
COVID-19. Kay Kirkpatrick has started self-quarantine. Plus, we have a new update from the Georgia Department of Public Health about the crisis in Georgia. As of 7 o'clock tonight, the health department says that we jumped to 485 cases and 14 deaths. As nurses and doctors fall ill all across the country, primary care physicians in hospitals want to ensure they're going to have the protective gear needed to treat patients. While we can't do anything to speed up production, Rebecca Lindstrom did talk with one doctor who says there is something you can do to help. Face masks, gloves, and eye protection, also known as personal protective equipment or PPE, are the hot items right now. Unfortunately, right now, we are not able to secure any type of delivery date. Kelly Ladd with Piedmont Internal Medicine says her office only needs that kind of stuff if someone with COVID-like symptoms walks through the door. On Monday, she had 50 sets of PPE. On Friday, she had 47. Do not come into the office if you have any type of symptom, you know, such as, you know, fever, cough, shortness of breath, because then you're contaminating other people. Lad says the best way to conserve limited resources is to streamline who needs them. She says many primary care offices like hers are still seeing patients for routine exams and physicals, but are using telemedicine now to treat those with COVID-like symptoms. And online tools like c19check.com, created by a doctor at Emory, can offer free advice on whether to seek medical help or not. The key is to save PPE for COVID cases that require hospitalization. Unfortunately, a lot of the PPE is made in China. The manufacturer 3M does produce N95 respirators in the U.S. and announced it had doubled production to manufacture 100 million masks per month globally. And there is a national stockpile. Already we have learned of looming supply shortages at specific hospitals in Georgia. I want you to know that we have taken immediate action working with federal officials to secure more tests as well as critically needed materials from the national stockpile. On the request list, more than 100,000 face masks, 10 pallets of medical face shields, as well as gloves, gowns, and goggles. We checked in with our local hospitals. Most say for now they have supplies. But the Phoebe Health System in southwest Georgia knows how quickly those supplies can go in a surge situation. Volunteers started making covers for their N95 masks to help them last longer. As of Friday afternoon, the system had 57 positive COVID cases and 540 people waiting on test results. Still, when asked what LAD feels medical professionals throughout the state need most right now. I think a lot of patience, uh, understanding, collaboration. So the Department of Public Health is sending a team to Albany to try to figure out why there has been such an intense outbreak in that area. It is our mission to bring you facts about this disease, and we want to remind you about the common symptoms, fever, a cough, usually a dry cough, and trouble breathing. These symptoms can appear anywhere between 2 to 14 days after exposure to the virus. This is a live look at downtown Athens empty on a Friday night. It is a rare sight uh, without anybody in it. Athens Clark County has become the first county in Georgia to order a shelter in place. Officials are calling on people to stay at home to help curb coronavirus cases. Errands like going to the grocery store, pharmacy and doctor's appointments are allowed. So is outdoor activity. Gas stations, banks and hardware stores are staying open. Restaurants are open, but only for delivery. I need to make sure that every one of my residents here in athens clark county is somebody who i can continue to have a conversation with in 12 and 18 months when we've come out of this the order is in place until the first week of april april 7th all right well we enjoyed a nice spring day out there the temperatures were great hopefully if you have like a patio or something you stuck a toe out jeff <laughs> <laughs> i like that idea we check in now with chris holcomb to see how the weekend is shaping up and we have some rain that's moving in right now and it's nothing severe nothing that impressive in fact it's showing signs of weakening as it continues to move in from alabama to the east into georgia a lot of this around metro atlanta is breaking up a good bit we had a couple of showers that came through the city earlier just kind of 
of dampening the roadways, not washing the pollen away yet. We have additional showers here in North Hall County, Southern White County, over into Habersham County. A little better coverage of rain, Fannin, Gilmer County, Towns and Union, those of far northwest Georgia counties down toward Gordon and also into Chattooga County near the Somerville area. And in West Georgia, tracking a few showers there, Paulding County into a Harrelson County, Northern Carroll, and more back in Cleburne and Randolph County into Alabama. That's going to keep pushing into our direction. You just expect to have a few showers here late tonight and overnight, uh, but we don't expect anything severe with this. In fact, take a live look out there right now and you can see what we're watching. This is our live look in Blue Ridge. Yeah, the roads are wet from those showers that have been moving through. Stay with us. We'll let you know if these will move out of here in time for you to have some sunshine for part of your weekend. There is good news tonight for anybody stressing tax day. The deadline has been pushed back three months. The Treasury Department made the announcement today on Twitter that taxes are now due July 15th. New at 10, Ryan Kruger shows us what that means for you and why you may not want to wait until the new deadline. Nearly 80 million Americans have already filed their taxes and are waiting for their returns. Those checks, thankfully, are still coming. But for everyone else, including businesses, you can now wait an extra three months. With everything going on in the world right now, filing your taxes might seem like the last thing you want to do. Unless, of course, you have a refund check coming your way. With this uncertainty that we have, uh, a refund check would be pretty nice to have right about now. A refund check is phenomenal because you need to get the money right quick because then you have more to spend, especially when you need it the most. Accounting professor Usha Ratcliffe tells me the average refund this year just shy of $3,000. But with new social distancing guidelines, that makes it difficult to do taxes the old-fashioned way of face-to-face -face meetings. You know, you can't go meet with your tax planner. You can't go meet with the CPA. So a lot of challenges around these things. The IRS has shut down all of its taxpayer assistance centers and no longer allows in-person contact. Contact. Tax preparer H&R Block will only allow you to drop off your forms. Ratcliffe says one huge benefit to pushing back tax day, she estimates there's about $300 billion in taxes that businesses and individuals would have paid next month, but now can wait. And that means there's so much more liquidity in the market. So individuals can use the money now, corporations can use the money now, and that's huge. Keep in mind, this is only for your federal tax returns. Your state tax returns are different, and right now in Georgia, the due date is still April 15th. I'm Hope Ford. 42 million people finally catching a break. Student loan borrowers can pause their payments for two months without any interest. And that will be until further notice. That's a big thing for a lot of students that are left in the middle right now. A much needed lift of financial weight for so many during the COVID-19 pandemic. Student loans have overtaken credit card debt as our largest financial burden. The pause is only for federal student loans. Borrowers need to contact their loan servicers and make a request. For people already a month behind, the suspension is automatic. If someone still wants to make payments, they can. But here's the difference. The payment will go to the principal instead of interest, allowing some borrowers to pay off their loan quicker. Seeing the debt decrease. So that's a very good thing anytime the money's going toward a uh, principal. Financial expert Dennis Hinton says this announcement is a good reprieve, but believes the 60-day suspension isn't long enough. As much time as they can give us to regroup, the better it's going to be long term. Still, it allows some breathing room. And Hinton says once the pandemic passes, he expects the government to keep rates low, allowing people to catch up on debt. It creates some certainty because you know there are some, some financial obligations you're not going to have to deal with right away. U.S. Senate records show Republican Senators David Perdue and Kelly Leffler got very active in the stock market following a January Senate briefing on the coronavirus outbreak. Records obtained by 11 Alive News show Leffler and her husband sold as much as $3.1 million worth of stock in the weeks before the market tanked. And it shows Purdue bought as much as $245,000 worth of stock in Pfizer. The pharmaceutical company is developing a COVID-19 vaccine. The figures are not exact because Senate requires disclosure of a range of value. Purdue and Leffler both say their stock portfolios are managed from outside with details disclosed after the fact. I'm only informed of my transactions after they occur, several weeks. So certainly those transactions, okay. at least on my behalf, were a mix of buys and sells, very routine for my portfolio. 
seeing to run against Purdue, Democrat John Ossoff called the stock trades pandemic profiteering. Governor Kemp still allowing pre-K child care centers to remain open. Some parents calling that a godsend, others calling it irresponsible. Here's John Shirek continuing our team coverage tonight. Some states are forcing child care centers to close, not Georgia. And yet more and more child care programs in Georgia are voluntarily closing. According to Georgia's DECAL, the Department of Early Care and Learning, as of Friday, 1,200 child care programs had temporarily closed, while just under 1,000, at least so far, are still open, including Little Sunshine's Playhouse and Preschool in Alpharetta. We need to be there for the parents that need us. Brett Rubal of Little Sunshine's does hear from parents who think he should close, such as parents on DECAL's Facebook page. One writes, if it's important to close school, why isn't it important to close child care centers. Makes no sense to me. Another, ridiculous and irresponsible. But parents who can't work at home, especially those working on fighting the coronavirus pandemic, are grateful that child care programs in Georgia are allowed to stay open. Whether it's doctors, health care providers, EMS, policemen, military, or, others, or other essential service providers that have to be out there to help get us through this. Could you imagine a scenario where essential service providers had no place to leave their children? So the state on its decal website provides a way for parents to find a pre-K child care program that's still open. They can type in a zip code to see a map of the nearest ones. As of now, the state considers allowing them to stay open a public service, not a public health threat. As cases spread here in Georgia, we keep hearing from people saying they can't get tested. What our reveal investigators found coming up next. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like Got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jeff. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic morning. One of the reasons that we're seeing more cases in the official numbers is that testing has been expanded. But still, people with symptoms and underlying health conditions are telling us they can't get anyone to swab them for testing. Brendan Keefe investigates. <coughs> Well, they diagnosed it as pneumonia. Add Melissa Spielholtz to the list of at-risk patients who can't get a COVID-19 test. You would qualify for a test under the current protocol, right? I've had symptoms that are very textbook to what they're saying the symptoms are, <coughs> and they're not testing me. So how many of me are there out there? These are some of the signs outside doctor's offices warning the sick not to enter. Some send patients to state hotlines. You can't get a human on the phone. It basically directs you back to your physician and your physician directs you to the hotline. I mean, it was an absolute circle. The reproductive rate of the COVID-19 virus with minimal interventions is expected to be around two. That means the average infected person can be expected to infect two more people. But that progression isn't two, two four, four, six, six eight, eight, eight ten, ten. ten. The number is compounded. That means one person infects two, two people. people, two people infect four, four people, people, 
four people infect eight, eight people, eight people, eight people infect 16, 16, people, 16, people, 16 people infect 30, 30, 32 people, people, 32 people infect 64, 64, 64, 64, 64 people, 64 people infect 128 people. people. That means if one infected person who doesn't need medical attention stays out of the hospital, out of the doctor's office, stays at home, they can keep themselves from infecting hundreds, hundreds of, of people. people. Millions of people are heeding the call, staying inside from coast to coast with some cities and entire states ordering their citizens to shelter in place indefinitely. The guidelines for testing are inconsistent. It's up to your doctor, but there's no requirement that any office or facility has to offer coronavirus testing. The fact that one of our biggest hospital groups is only testing employees speaks volumes. Um, you know, they don't want the healthcare workers to get sick, which while it's understandable, it's not doing the public any good. Melissa ultimately got an at-home swab kit, which the lab picked up in person. Self-tests are not yet FDA approved, but some at-risk patients with symptoms say they're left with no other choice. <coughs> in Atlanta, I'm Brendan Keefe. Viewers are telling us some hospitals are still using foreign travel as a prerequisite for testing. Months after the first cases were reported in the U.S., well, it's been a long week for many of us, particularly if you were working inside from your home. Yeah, but Chris, will there be some nice weather and a chance for people to just step out of the front door of their patio to enjoy this weekend? You know, I think Saturday's going to be the better day for that as we're going to start off in the morning with some clouds around a lingering raindrop or two as possible early tomorrow morning. But that's all going to push out of our area and we'll be able to dry out for much of the day. And you can see the system that is coming through right now that is bringing in some of those scattered showers. As this moves to the east, it's really falling apart. It's not a good coverage of rain over on on the east side, better coverage of rain north and west of the city and also coming in from Alabama into West Georgia. We had a couple of showers that came through Atlanta earlier. Not much right now, but we're watching this over in Paulding County near Dallas. That'll move into, Cher uh, into Cherokee County and Cobb County in just a little bit here. Douglas County, you've seen a couple of those showers and then in North Georgia, a few of these showers north of Gainesville and north of Hall County up into parts of Habersham County, uh, trending down into areas of uh, Banks County as well. And then a better coverage of this rain in far north Georgia from Fannin, Gilmer County, Towns County, Union County as well. And then uh, northwest Georgia seeing some of those showers. And on the west side, we're watching the next batch that's moving in from Alabama. This is in Cleburne and Randolph County, Alabama. A little pocket of heavy rain there south of, Fol of Folsom. That's going to move into Carroll County, also into parts of Heard County. So just know these scattered showers are around our area. And there's more coming through tonight, but the trend is they're weakening. We haven't seen any severe weather. We're not really concerned about severe weather in our area overnight. Take a look out there right now. You can see what we're watching. This again is a live look in Rome where not actively raining hard right now in Rome, but the roads are wet from some of the showers that came through there just a little bit earlier uh, in the Rome area. You can see as the red light changes here, it's reflecting on the road from some of the wetness that is there from the showers. Here's a future radar look at what we're going to be watching tonight. Notice how this system is it really that impressive? It's not like a, a sharp line of showers and thunderstorms moving through. It's just some moisture rolling through. It's breaking up a little bit as it comes in at two in the morning. Not a widespread coverage of rain, just a few spotty showers. And then in the morning, this is at 645. So it depends on what time you wake up on a Saturday morning. If you're going to see any rain around the roads, maybe a little damp still in the morning, a raindrop or two really early, but that all moves out. And then we'll start off the drying out process and even the clearing out process later in the day. It's been really mild today. We got up to 83 degrees. We were three degrees away from a record today. Uh, right now we're back down to 67. We have some 70s on the south side. As that rain comes in, it cools it off just a little bit, but it's still going to stay mild overnight with 60s pretty much throughout those overnight hours and those showers. That'll be tapering off here by morning and even some sunshine beginning to come through. Tomorrow on the wasometer, we're going to go with an 8. You know, we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Lows near 60, highs near 73 in the afternoon. That's going to be 10 degrees lower than it was today. So 73 is still above average, but just not as warm as it was today. Here's the moisture rolling through tonight. In the morning, again, just a couple little raindrops around, and then it gets out of here. Clouds break up, and how about that? In the afternoon, some sunshine coming through, but that northwest flow cools us down a little bit. By Sunday, another round of rain moves in. 
just light showers and cooler air at 64, 69 Monday, 60% chance for rain, 50% chance Tuesday, maybe a little thunder with that, and then Wednesday down to 30%. Thursday looks like the driest day as more scattered showers come in Friday as we're into the lower 80s. Take a look at your weather wow moment. That is a big wow. That's not pollen. That is snow, and it's not here either. It is in Colorado, in Denver. Heavy snow filled the streets there. The city saw between 5 and 10 inches. Now we're looking at the pollen here in our area. We'd love to see your weather wow moments. We get a lot of these from our 11 Alive community storm trackers. We'd love for you to be a part of that group on Facebook. Search 11 Alive storm trackers. Ask to become a member. We'll approve you, and you can be a part of this exclusive weather community. I'm Francesca Emmerker with the A scene, the resident to the rescue. How a Georgia film crew was able to swoop in and help out a local hospital. That story behind a very special photo coming up next in the A scene. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. No, 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 Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chester. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, five to seven AM. Only on eleven alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the rush block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. Everybody has learned how to drive. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for Friday's edition of the AC. And we are kicking off with a Friday full of stories that's going to make you smile at humanity. First up, take a look at this photo. I love it so much. See that? I know you're wondering, what am I looking at, Francesca? Well, guess what? These are medical supplies like gloves, masks, and gowns set aside for Grady Hospital, all donated from the set and production team of the Georgia film show, The Resident. We actually spotted this photo on the Instagram of Dr. Karen Law, who wrote that she told her Emory residents that supplies are low and a magical shipment of masks is unlikely to arrive. And yet, a magical shipment of masks did arrive for this team you see there in the form of this very generous gesture. She was over the moon. And if you or you know anyone who was able to donate medical supplies at this time, you're urged to reach out to the email on your screen. She put this on her Instagram as well. That's emorycovidresponse at gmail.com. Next. Ah. Hello. Oh, so is that Shaq? Oh, Shaq. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hold on a second. Let me see. Hi, Shaq. Hi. 
Hey, Shad, can you imagine being on FaceTime with your teacher and then boom, there goes Shaquille O'Neal making a cameo? Well, that's what happened to a group of Georgia's first graders and their parents when NBA icon Shaquille O'Neal dropped in during a homeschool learning session. The gentle giant appeared on the screen while students at East Lake Elementary in Henry County were doing some schoolwork via online video class. Shaquille told the kids to be good and to listen to their parents. And Tala Perry coming through with a little humor to lighten our day as we deal with the coronavirus. In an Instagram post, you see this? Oh my gosh, he shows what appears to be a very, um, very ashy hand after so much hand washing. <laughs> he tells his followers to continue washing their hands and make sure they are social distancing. And as always, folks, for more of the A-Scene, make sure you visit our website, 11alive.com slash the A-Scene. My producer, Ryan Dennis, he's working from home, updating you on our website. Story after story, head on over right now. All right, thanks, Fran. Well, it's time for me to head out to get ready to bring you more updated information on 11 Alive. Coming up on Up Late in about 35 minutes. Aisha, thank you. Have a great weekend. We'll look for you over on 11 Alive. Despite warnings from health officials, hundreds of young people are skipping isolation and heading to the beach. Why doctors say this could make the pandemic even worse. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel like thing. we have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they didn't yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys Mom, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 a.m.
Chances are you have seen the term social distancing at least once this week. Health officials telling us to stay home and avoid large groups. But despite the warnings, thousands of young people are celebrating on spring break at the beach in Florida. It is a decision that can put a lot of people in danger. Here's NBC's Kerry Sanders from Clearwater. This morning, a growing plea to put the brakes on spring break immediately. This is so unintelligent and reckless. I mean, it can knock them on their, on their butt. We're seeing that more and more of you are not immune. Everything we say and urge applies to you as well. Troubling images of large groups of young people seemingly ignoring coronavirus guidelines. Obviously, people our age are like, oh, like it doesn't affect us. There's cheap flights. Like, let's do this. Government health officials are now emphasizing new statistics from the CDC, showing nearly 40 percent of coronavirus patients hospitalized in the U.S. are between ages 20 and 54. Early messaging from Chinese data had focused more heavily on how deadly the disease is for the elderly and those with pre existing conditions. If even 10 or 15 percent of the population decides that what they're doing today is more important than the health and welfare of the rest of the Americans, they can spread the virus in a very strong way. The Surgeon General asking Kylie Jenner to share the message online with her 200 million followers. Nobody's immune to this. Millennials are not immune to this. In Florida Thursday, the news that you're getting about coronavirus is primarily coming from social media? Uh, yeah. yeah. I think coming from people that we're more familiar with rather than like a random person on the news, it catches our eye better. More than 350 cruise ship passengers flown into Atlanta today after being stranded off the coast of France. The Costa Limnosa ship was finally allowed to dock in France yesterday. The governor's office confirms three passengers tested positive, but they're not showing any symptoms. Another 13 are ill, but they have not been tested yet. 70 of the passengers are Canadians. They're being taken to Dobbins Air Reserve Base for quarantine. The city of Cartersville working to contain the spread of COVID-19. Since last week, Cartersville Medical Center says that it has had at least 32 patients test positive for the virus. As of last night, 12 were still in the hospital. 39 patients were awaiting test results. And this is why we keep emphasizing social distancing. Several of those cases are believed to be tied back to a church service a couple of weeks ago. Right now, no visitors are allowed in most parts of the hospital. Doctors say this is the best way to ensure staff and other patients remain virus free. Another cluster of cases in southwest Georgia leading a metro Atlanta county to take action. The Cherokee County Marshal's Office now urging people to limit who attends funeral services. Here's Nick Sturdivant with more. For most funeral services, it's a time for people to gather and console each other. However, Cherokee County officials want people in funeral homes to be safe in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak. The Cherokee County Sheriff's Office has recently, the Marshal's Office, reached out to funeral homes and providers recommending they follow the CDC's recommendation, asking that funeral homes not have more than 10 people at a time in a room for visitations and services. They told me this is in response to what happened in Doherty County, where evidence suggests two funerals may be tied to eight cases and expose several other people to the virus. This, this isn't a law. We're not going to arrest people because they've got 12 people at their funeral. We're just asking people to, this is a, this is a different time. And we're under a different set of circumstances than normal. So it's really been a harder transition for families not being able to have all of their friends and loved ones. And the sheriff's office was very clear. This is not a ban on funeral services. They just want to limit the number of people that attend these services. Telling people to limit who can attend funerals and weddings, other major moments in life will make a lot of people feel uneasy, but experts say it helps flatten the curve of the outbreak through social distancing. This red line is what the number of coronavirus cases would look like if we did not cancel these kinds of things. The number of cases would skyrocket. And of course, you know by now that would overwhelm the hospital since the virus spreads through person to person contact. Experts believe if we distance ourselves from others and stay away from the crowds, we could spread new cases out over a longer period of time, basically buying time for our doctors and nurses to treat people who need help. A stern message out of the state of Illinois. The governor has now issued a stay at home order for all non-essential workers. This comes less than 24 hours after New York Governor Andrew Cuomo issued a similar order. The state of California is also under a stay at home order 
As of yesterday, Governor Kemp told us the state doesn't have plans to issue shelter-in-place orders at this point. And the U.S. and Mexico have agreed to temporarily close the border for all non-essential travel. According to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the restrictions go into effect overnight. It will not apply to essential workers and also should not impact trade. The White House issued a level four travel advisory. All Americans who are currently overseas are urged to return to the United States as soon as possible. As Americans struggle to get a handle on coronavirus, another country dealing with this strain is Italy. They have been pounded. More than 4,000 people have died from the virus, 627 of those just yesterday. 11 Elias Mara Siriani spoke with the Metro Atlanta native now living in Italy. Brett Toman and his family have been living in Italy for the past six years, so it's safe to say they're pretty comfortable with living the day-to-day -day life there. However, on day 11 of the country's shutdown, they say their lives have been turned upside down. This is the Toman family. Brett is from Peachtree City and now lives in the town of Loretto, Italy. He owns a travel company, which is temporarily shut down. Brett says it started out as a soft lockdown, meaning Italians could only leave their homes for essential reasons. Now, he says they can only go to the grocery store or leave for health reasons, and you can only do this by yourself. If you can avoid this, uh, take the uh, self-distancing uh, you know, measurements seriously, because if you can self-distance now, you can avoid a total shutdown. And I the, the Italian, the government tried to tell us Italians, you know, we didn't do it. And for whatever reason, this thing caught on like fire and spread through the country. And now we're on total lockdown. And I don't want to see that happen to uh, my friends and family and people of Atlanta. And Brett says things are getting more strict by the day. He says, thankfully, his family is healthy. They're taking a lot of added precautions. But he does know people who have tested positive for the coronavirus. La Grata, the longtime institution in Buckhead, the great restaurant, doing what they can to try to help their workers and its customers have come through in a big way for them. You would expect nothing less. The great loyalty toward La Grata has been a generational thing that we have seen off Peachtree Road. Latasha Givens says more. Normally, when you pass through Atlanta during lunchtime, you'll find restaurants full of customers at every turn. But now in many plazas, every other restaurant is closed. But before owners are faced with a tough decision of whether to throw in the towel or not, they want to make sure their customers and employees are taken care of, starting with one of the oldest restaurants in Atlanta. La Grotta has been a Buckhead staple serving classic Italian cuisine for over 40 years. It was arguably one of the first fine dining establishments here in Atlanta and uh, continues to serve patrons. It's the kind of restaurant where customers have their favorite house seat. The decor is as decadent as the dessert menu and the average employee has worked there at least 15 years. But like other Metro Atlanta restaurants, the coronavirus is threatening its very survival. We have to shutter our doors to uh, the open public uh, because of the virus. But managing partner Christian Favalli and his wife decided to turn to their loyal customers for support. They came up with a gift card campaign, hoping to raise about $10,000 to help their staff meet their basic needs. To his surprise, the financial love poured in, with customers donating $50,000. We had service staff members in tears. I'd, at $50,000, we actually had to cap it um, because there's only so much that we could shoulder. Favali says 100% of the $50,000 will go to their 30 employees for the next two payroll checks. We feel blessed that A, we've been, that this community has kept us in business for this long, but at a time of need, they really stepped up and, and helped out. Uh, helped out our staff, helped out us. The Favalli family has two relatives in Italy right now who are recovering from the coronavirus. So in addition to being concerned about those loved ones, they're trying to keep several businesses afloat. And remember, we have a live blog on 11alive.com posting the very latest information on the outbreak so you can find it quickly and easily. We're also sharing it on the 11 Alive news app. And we're keeping an eye on our tower cams. Some of them in North Georgia are showing some wet roads there uh, from some of the rain that's been moving through. We're not expecting anything strong overnight. Stay with us. We're going to talk about when this rain is going to move out and if we'll see more coming in for the second half of the weekend. Coming up next, Georgia Tech's men's basketball program banned from the postseason, but then March Madness was canceled. So does the Jackets ban count? We asked Tech's athletic director after this. 
and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh. did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I've got like the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chester. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. right, right. about I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The outcast. As always, 11 Alive is committed to giving you facts, not fear. A new study from the National Institutes of Health is giving concrete numbers for how long this coronavirus can survive on different surfaces. Jason Puckett with our Verify team has the story. We're talking about a new study today because it gives us the first real data about how long this coronavirus can survive on surfaces. That's important because every number so far has been based on data from SARS in 2003. Now we aren't relying on an old virus anymore. So let's jump into the study and break down the facts of what it does and doesn't say. The research was done by the National Institutes of Health and CDC with scientists at Princeton and UCLA. So this chart shows the basic results. They tested five environments, aerosol, copper, cardboard, stainless steel, and plastic. The main findings, that it can remain aerosolized or in the air for up to three hours. That it can survive on stainless steel or plastic for 72 hours, cardboard for about 24 hours, or copper for about four hours. So these numbers represent how long the virus can survive, but that doesn't mean that it always will. We know the virus's survivability is impacted by outside factors like temperature and humidity, but this test was in a controlled environment temperature between 70 to 73 degrees and 40% humidity. 
That means that in a perfect lab environment, the virus can survive this long. But in a real world situation, those other factors could lower survivability. The main takeaway, that we should be cautious of most surfaces right now, even ones like copper. And make sure you avoid touching your face and mouth. And as always, keep on washing your hands. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Business close to the Bartow County COVID outbreak are struggling to stay safe. While still making money, a hairstylist talked to 11 Alive and says she is torn between wanting to serve her clients, but wanting to stay healthy too. She's just miles from the outbreak at the Bartow County Church where several people have fallen ill. She says everyone she knows knows somebody in quarantine. And she says social distancing is impossible in a field that forces her to be you know, very close to her clients. And she does not think the government has given them guidance about what they ought to do. A lot of us have chosen to work even against the six-foot rule that was implemented by the president and the CDC. But telling our, our clients who are also family no is a very hard thing in my industry. So she made the difficult decision to shut down until this passes. Due to the coronavirus, Bank of America says some customers can ask to defer payments. The bank says it will grant relief on a case-by-case -case basis for mortgages and home equity loans, overdraft fees and deposit accounts, credit cards, small business and auto loans, too. The bank has also paused foreclosures and repossessions and evictions. The number of flu-like activity increased last week, but the overall severity was on the low side. So far, there have been at least 38 million cases. 390,000 people had to be hospitalized. There have been over 23,000 deaths, including 149 children. Such difficult times. Times so tough on children. So we wanted to share some creative ways that you are helping keep their spirits up. Man, this beat got me feeling like the franchise boys in this beat. Lean with it, rock with it, lean sweat. Those are teachers at Ron Clark Academy holding a virtual dance off to keep in touch with students. I know what you're thinking. Why is Captain America at Hopkins? Well, we want to celebrate all of the superheroes that have been working super hard here at Hopkins. Say hi, Hopkins. And a shout out from the Gwinnett County principal to everyone keeping students learning and eating during these very difficult times. Chris? We have another batch of rain over in West Georgia right now that's about to move into the city. So far, the showers that have been moving in from the west, a lot of them as they push over to the east have been falling apart. But now we're seeing more of these, especially out I-20 on the west side that are about to move in. We've got some in Cobb County between Smyrna and Kennesaw right there along 75 about to move into Marietta. That's got a little bit of moderate rain with it. West side of the perimeter is dry now, but you have some showers back in Douglas County and in Carroll County. Some of those showers will keep moving into Atlanta. We're seeing a, a few more breaks here in northeast Georgia where we had some of those showers earlier, a better coverage of rain over north Georgia, and even a little band right there of moderate rain coming out of Floyd County, moving into Gordon County, just to the west of Calhoun there and on 75. That's going to keep moving to the east as well. And then down on the west side, more showers in Carroll County, Harrelson, Cleburne, Randolph County. A little bit of that heavy activity about to cross over into Heard County. We're not seeing any thunder and lightning with this, even though we had some back in Alabama. And we're not concerned about severe weather overnight. These will just be some showers that move through. At times, maybe moderate. There might be a couple of pockets of some isolated, heavier showers with that as well. Let me take you live up into Rome, where we see some of those showers that have been moving through. And, well, we just kind of skipped over that live shot. I'll show you that at 11 o'clock, where this is the forecast track for tonight. We're watching these showers that are over Rome right now into Metro Atlanta. And the trend as they move to the east is that they're going to weaken a good bit and we'll still have just a few lingering light showers. This is really early in the morning, just a couple of spotty areas of some light rain, maybe some sprinkles there that'll keep moving over to the east. So depending on what time you wake up in the morning, we'll determine whether or not you see any rain, maybe just a couple of those raindrops really early. Now the pollen count today, crazy high, 1668. Yesterday's pollen count was 108. So we are a lot higher out there today. Main pollens present are pine, oak, birch, sweet gum, and hackberry. Grass pollens are low, the weed pollens are low, but the pollen present is sheep sorrel. And then we also have mold. 
<coughs> excuse me, mold that is in the high range, and that's going to continue uh, to cause some issue with some folks either, as I have an itch in my throat as well. 67 right now here in town, 72 in Peachtree City, 72 in Eatonton, 74 in Athens. Everybody else is generally in those 60s. We'll see the 60s overnight and then start off in the morning with the uh, Rain moving out and clearing skies and the seven day forecast showing the rain though returning on Sunday highs cooler at 64 69 Monday back to the 70s Tuesday with a few scattered showers, maybe a thunder shower to 30% chance Wednesday and then Thursday partly cloudy skies in 81 and then a few scattered showers redeveloping again on Friday with highs still in the lower 80s. All right, sports time on a Friday night from the final four to spring football, the coronavirus has impacted college athletics in historic ways. Alex Glaze caught up with Georgia Tech's athletics director, Todd Stansbury, to see how they are handling things on the flats. Let's start from the beginning with you. Just how, how are you doing with, with all this? I think I'm doing, I'm doing well. Obviously, we're in uncharted territory, and uh, my, uh, it's hard to believe it's been a week you know, seven, eight days, and it feels like uh, these have been dog years. Have any athletes or Georgia Tech staffers tested positive that you know of? No, no. So far, uh, so far that hasn't happened, and, and we're definitely thankful for that. A big topic on social media right now is the NCAA tournament. Obviously, just before all of this stuff started to happen, um, you all did – take on a postseason ban um, for this postseason. The way I interpret it is there were ACC tournament games played, so the ban is still going to count. Is that kind of how you see it also? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we've uh, fulfilled our, our um, one-year ban requirement, and now it's just uh, our attorneys are, are uh, finalizing all of that and working with the NCAA. But, um, yeah, I can honestly say I did not see this coming, that's for sure. Today, Anthony Edwards announced on Twitter he is leaving UGA and declaring for the NBA draft. Georgia head coach Tom Crean thinks Edwards will be the number one pick and is excited to see what the Ant-Man does in the NBA. I think he's got an incredible future. I think he's going to get nothing but better. I think it's going to be crucial that he get into a program the next level that that can, that can really get him to continue to develop. Todd Gurley is coming back to Georgia. He has agreed to a one-year deal with the Falcons pending a physical. They need a back to replace Devontae Freeman, and they have a pretty good one there. Gurley's the former UGA teammate Aaron Murray weighed in on what the Falcons are getting. Like great energy. He's always joking around, having a good time, and that's the kind of guy you want the locker room. You know, you want good guys, good character, someone who is not going to be a diva. And Todd's not one of those guys. Todd's the guy that just shows up. He works every single day. His football intelligence is extremely high. And obviously, he's a great running back. Big, physical. He's tremendous out of the backfield as well, winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups in the past game. All right, Todd Gurley is 25. Let's hope that knee of his, which is certainly more than suspect, will uh, stay healthy. We'll knock on wood for him. That's a look at sports. We're back right after this. Spots created by the artist Jex. People flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. 
So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They <laughs> are fun. And they're, they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. I just That's feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Here's a look at radar as we're watching some of those showers that are moving through. Nothing too strong. We've got one good little heavy shower in the southern parts of Meriwether County. Another little batch of moderate rain coming out of Rome, moving into uh, parts of Bartow County. Tomorrow, that rain ends early, maybe just a few raindrops really early tomorrow, then decreasing clouds. Cooler with a high of 73. A little cooler Sunday at 64 with a better chance for showers. More showers Monday into Tuesday. Hopefully lower rain chances Wednesday, looking dry Thursday before additional scattered showers move in again Friday with highs right around the lower 80s by the end of the week. All right, Chris, thanks. We appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Thank you for watching 11 Alive News at 10. We always appreciate it. 11 Alive has all your info next. Hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. 
you hear what happened today, I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. From 11 Alive News, Up Late starts now. Breaking now on Up Late, the coronavirus now impacting a new state lawmaker. That's right. Tonight, a second state senator revealed that she tested positive for the virus. We're talking about Senator Kate Kirkpatrick.